What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Hammer Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Got a fun little DIY-ish kit we're going to be building. We're going to be building a CW transceiver from a tuna can kit. And I will be talking about a little bit about how to solder, uh, a couple other kit recommendations if you're interested in building your own kit. They can be quite rewarding if you find that stuff interesting. So make sure you uh, stick around because we're going to be having a lot of fun on the way. Got a couple of interesting things to, to share with you all, but uh, we'll get started here shortly after a little memes. Hey, I see Andy and Mike and Ron and Brian. How's it going, everybody? Felix Farcorson, how's it going? Yeah, there's already a lot of tuna fish jokes going around. And you know I'm here for it. If those turn into tuna memes on the ham memes, make sure you join us over on the Discord where we have ham memes, much like you see the ones here, which are all generally shopped from the Discord. Kyle, A-0-Z, maybe taking a break from uh, the Riddy Roundup because he's in the chat. Thanks for coming out. Nicholas Hopkins, thanks for saying hi. All right, enough of all that. Let's get things going here. All right, everybody, how's it going? I am Josh, K-I-6-N-A-Z. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. TC Fitz, coming in hot with the, uh, with the 762. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Let's see. Couple other things going on today. We'll be running around a little bit. A uh, little precursor. Who can guess? Th this is something that's on my shack. Who can guess what this is? What you're seeing right now? I have a U a kind of a crappy USB microscope. Who knows what we're looking at? Who can take a guess and tell me what that is? I'll wait for uh, a little bit. <laughs> you guys all can see that hopefully. Anyway, I do have a tinsel, Nathan says. No, it's not. Shavings from a, a lathe? No. Tinsel? Nope. No, it's not. It Brass shavings is probably the closest. So it is my uh, Brillo pad, that Brillo pad that you use to clean your soldering tip. This is a little mini USB microscope that I've had for a little while, and I dusted it off because it literally fell behind the shack. So if we ever, if we need to go in there and look for... Uh, any solder bridges? Well, look at that. We can get real up close and personal. That's really the Brillo pad right there. Pretty cool. Yeah, steel wools, bend, flannings, pretty close. I wish it was gold shavings. That'd be sweet. I'd be definitely down for that. Okay, before we kick things off, I do uh, want to remind everybody we will be doing the Discord after chat. Today, I'm going to be a little ambitious and try to do some of it with the, the VR headset on, remoted into my Ham Shack computer, and see how that works. I'll be live streaming to Twitch, but the link is in the description for the Discord, so make sure you follow us there as well. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's go to the web real fast. Ham Radio Crash Course's Discord, or di not Discord, merch page is hamtactical.com. You can still grab some coffee, although we are running low on the holiday coffee. We are almost out of that, so if you're interested. I know for a fact them radio waves is harmful. Commander Corvus Corax Nevermore sends a super chat. Can you tune a fish or tune a can? Uh, you can both. I never understood that you can't tune a fish. I mean, it is a tuna fish. If it is a tuna fish, you can, anyway. I mean, yes, I think you can. Anyway, check that out. Okay, so we're going to be doing a kit today. Building a kit. I'm going to try to get through the whole thing. Uh, we'll be building the little Squall transceiver. I believe I have the first gen model. This is the second gen that's available from QRP Me. What this is, guys, is it's a literally a tuna can. It's sealed. You have to open it up. Um, it's in separate little baggies for the components. Very easy instructions. It's basically a pixie. It's a basically a pixie kit with some improvements that we'll talk about as we're going along. So if you've ever built a pixie, you may not need to redo the building of the pixie. Uh, if that's not something you're interested in. Also, it's kind of expensive. This is the upgraded model, which is $40. I believe the previous model was $30. This includes a low-pass filter on the new one, which could be interesting. I believe this also has... There's a couple other things we'll see as we go through the instructions. 
But if you're interested in building kits and you don't necessarily want to go down this road, one that I have built on other videos is from Four States QRP, and it is the Cricut 40. I've also built the Cricut 30, and we've played around with it on the live stream. And uh, I have it on the, the, the video here on the overhead cam that I can show you later. But it is a uh, CW paddle. You don't have to wind any toroids. Those circles are the actual toroids that are all wound up. Runs off of a BNC connection and and runs off a 9-volt battery. Pretty cool radio if you're starting out building kits. And it's uh, pretty inexpensive. I believe when we did... When we had Steve K5 ATA come out on the show and we were talking about the, you know, the kids that, that he runs through his whole um, ham radio club thing, the money that we generated at that night, I, I took all that money from the Super Chats and we bought a bunch of kits for him. Now, these are saying they're 35. I don't remember them being that expensive. Maybe it's the 40 uh, meter one that's more expensive. Not sure what that's all about, but hey, everything's getting more expensive, guys. Did you notice that? <laughs> I've noticed it. As we're going along, uh, there's a link in the description to my Hammer Radio Crash Course Shack Tools and Kit Building, and I have uh, made sure that everything's up to date here with the top row and a couple of the other things are all things that I use all the time. So my uh, soldering station is this Hako. I absolutely love this Hako. It is my preferred, absolutely preferred soldering station. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. Link is in the description for the uh, store there, but it, it's got everything, including my little P, uh, PCB vise. This is really, really helpful if you're starting out soldering. It makes the whole thing uh, much, much easier to, to do PCBs like this. Obviously this one's round, but it'll still work and I'll show you how to use it. Last but not least, if you're interested in QRP stuff, make sure to go to QRP Guys. QRP Guys has antenna kits and tuner kits and actual radio transceivers as well that are all kits that you build. There are a lot of YouTubers who have built the, let's see, we have built the Unun, the 4210 Unun Plus build. This is a cool little build as well. And these are all, again, kits. They're all PCB based. Them radio Super cool. waves is harmful. Let me catch up on the super chats. Thank you, Commander, again, Commander Corvus. Pablo D, thank you so much for the super chat. So those are just some things to, to think about as you're uh, as you're getting into this. But we are going to be building, come on now, we're going to be building this guy. And it's going to kind of look like that when we're done. So let's uh, dive into that. All right. Before, before we get started, though, Grimus, Grimus from the Discord, he sent some beers. Now... I'm sure a lot of you have watched Ham Radio 2.0's Sunday live streams and some of his other live streams where he has a pickle beer. Now, I'm not doing a, a super chat for sips kind of thing. Don't worry about that. I'm not trying to do anything like that. Uh, but Grime has sent me a pickle beer. I've never had one. I really wanted to try it. I think I'm quite going to like it. But I read the, the label on this thing. And uh, uh, man. Okay, so this is the... That's the Spicy Pickle Monster. Okay, the concern I have with this is not that it's spicy. That's not a big deal to me. It's that on the label here, it says that it is a sour ale. That was the part that got me. With spicy dill pickles, orange, lemon, and lime. And that's just going to be a green screen nightmare. There's my head. Um, but anyway, uh, let's let's crack open this thing because I I wanna I wanna try it. Doesn't smell like pick. It smells like dill. It smells like dill. Okay, I'm putting it in my cat cup. See, I, I like uh, micheladas, and I like clamato in beer. I like all kinds of stuff like that. So this doesn't seem like it's going to bother me much. It's sour. Yeah, it's really, it's a sour ale. Woo. It's more sour beer than pickle. I would prefer it to be like a a lager or just a non sour. Yeah, it's it's more the sour than the pickle. The pickle is a little no big deal on the pickles for me. I I would uh I would I would drink this <laughs> again. I would drink this but without the uh without the need for the uh, the sour. It's very sour. Okay, let's go ahead and go on over to the overhead here. Show you what we're working with. Let me grab my stuff and move on over. 
And I am watching the chat, so if you at Ham Radio Crash Course, you'll I'll be able to see it as we move along. So this is the uh, White Squall. This is the little tuna can kit. You open it like that, ooh, and the PCB goes flying. It's quite a nice printed PCB, which I'll, I'll lay right here. And everything's marked out. And it's marked out specifically for all the different components that, that you're going to see there. So it makes it pretty easy, including the antenna jacks, where the different jacks are. And if I, if I remember looking at this, yeah, so you have your resistor, for instance, right here, the 33K resistor. Can you see that? There you go. It's that guy right there, 33K, you can see. Okay, so it, it, it should make this pretty easy. So I'm going to put this on the side for a second. So the can is literally a, a sealed tuna can. Yeah, I know people do uh, Kool-Aid pickles. And there you go. Literally a sealed tuna can. So make sure you discard this because it's sharp. I'm going to do that now. Now this is broken up into multiple baggies of parts if I if I read the instructions correctly, or not. That's just one bag. Huh. It was supposed to be multiple bags. Okay. That's going to make things a little bit more interesting. So here's the antenna jack. Looks like uh, also some other kind of jack. Two RCA jacks. We'll put those, put those in the pile here. You got a uh, jack for headphones or a key. This is something, some kind of metal stabilizer. We'll figure out what that is. This is the low pass filter board, little squall low pass filter. Oh, you know what? You're going to be pretty nice. Nice printed PCBs. We have a kind of a pin header type of setup, which I'm guessing goes something like that. In fact, I'm, I'm almost positive that's for the low pass filter and then another audio jack. And then lastly, there's this little nut and bolt. And what that's supposed to do is when you're done, the PCB will live on top of the can and the can has a hole in it. So the bolt goes through and use the nut or you know the bolt to tighten it up. So that's how it all looks uh, once you're done. It's supposed to live on top of the can and be a little novelty that you may leave in your shack. Felix Farquharson says, I managed to persuade my dad to stay up for the winter field day episode. We'll look forward to that. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'm I think I'm gonna be I think I'm gonna be going to a a, a location. I'll be on on location in the frigid Southern California environment. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna break this down as we go. Again, I'm doing this for the first time as well, so I will inevitably make some mistakes as we go. Plus, I'm a little um, I'm a little worried that the instructions were already following off, falling off the path of the instructions because it said that the baggie would be and those are the baggies of parts. The baggie would be broken up into a series of different bags, not just a bag. So that means we're going to have to um, take our time a little bit with this. All right, so if we go down to the first setup steps, in fact, I'll, I'll walk you along as we do this. So it breaks down what's in the kit. You've already kind of seen some of that stuff. There are some transistors as well, some diodes and resistors, capacitors, polarized capacitors. Okay, so there's your full parts list. Um, you know, I, I like to do things live and I didn't do any inventory beforehand because I didn't want to open the can before you saw it. I had to do, I had to wait for everybody to be there. There's your schematic. And again, this is the P, uh, the PDF that's off of the website for QRP Me. So if you're so inclined, if you want to build this, make sure you download that or however it is you're going to use it. Okay, so bag one, the big oscillator yellow parts. So that we're going to build the oscillator first, which it looks like uh, I need to reorient my, let's see if I, yeah, I'm just going to reorient my 
PCB a little bit. So now I'm in line with the instructions. So if I switch back over here, like that, we're now matching what the instructions say about how to line this whole thing up. I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. Torque is applied by tensioning this, and then now I can, I can just go in and rotate my PCB as I need to. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's back this up a bit. Free our parts. My soldering iron is already hot. I heated that up. It's good to go. I'm going to try and break some of these parts out a little bit. Yeah, because I'm not in the white chair. Nicholas Hopkins, I've slid over to the right. I'm not in shot anymore. You're not going to see me. Why? Right, got a couple of things here. Oop. I normally would go through. By the way, guys, what you generally want to do is your when you when you piece out a kit, right? When you're working on kits, you want to go in and separate out your components. So your resistors, they're they're going to be a couple of the same resistors in each kit, likely many if it's a big enough kit. So it's nice to have them all separated out. I use a little parts bin to separate them. In this case, because uh, I wanted everybody to experience the opening of the, the can live, I did not actually go in and pull out my resistors and group them up, which I, I should have done. It makes the, the whole build go a lot faster, particularly when you're live and inevitable going to screw up. That's why people tune into these. There is a crystal. There should be two crystals in here. There are. All right, we're down to the last little bits. Bag is empty. Right onto the soldering iron. Fantastic work. Okay, let's get some of this stuff out of here so I don't have to hold it. I love this IC is just chucked into the uh, just chucked into the bag. It doesn't have any foam or anything. There's the second crystal. So there are two crystals that come in this kit. This kit is uh, not frequency agile. It does not have a VFO, a variable frequency oscillator. So you're going to change cans. These crystals, there's two types. This is a, a 40 meter radio. So it will work on the high side of Morse code and the low side of the Morse code space on 40 meters. Technicians, you do have access to those portions. So if you are a technician, you may want to try this kit out. And that's what happens. Oop, I just dropped two capacitors. That's what happens when you just throw everything into a baggie and they're not separated. You uh, inevitably will damage in, in traffic and shipping and whatever, although this is in a tuna can, which is pretty robust. You inevitably will damage some parts. There are a couple of electrolytic capacitors, which I'll put in their own little space over here. This is a transformer. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, there we go. Not a transformer. Transistor. Some of these capacitors you can do by, like, eyeball, just looking at them. You kind of know where they go. But um, always, always, always double check before soldering any of this stuff. And two more transistors. Okay, I think that's it. Got our parts laid out, these guys, and one diode. A couple of these guys are going to be polarized, so make sure you follow the polarization chart as best you can. Okay, so let's go back up. Make sure I'm looking at the right thing. All right, so we're going to do the 171 machined pin socket, which I believe is this guy. Okay, got my solder here. I'm tapping into my old surplus of solder. <laughs> this is some old stuff. 
All right, so for these guys, let me let me make sure you can see all the action here. Okay. So with the with these guys down here, right? So soldering, for those of you that are new to soldering, the game is to apply heat to the pin that comes through the pin the through hole and the little bed, the foot here. What am I thinking of? The solder bed? Solder bed? Why am I drawing a blank on that? Let me take a sip of beer. Solder pad. There you go. You're using your iron to sandwich between the two, the pin and the solder pad, uh, and then apply solder to. So when you come underneath the board, and you see these guys sticking out right there like that, you kind of have to, I do something like this. <laughs> I'll show you what I do in a second. Once I get the iron on, I can often just hold the iron. Oh, not if this rotates. There we go. And then hold it into place for it to harden up. And then you've got six more to do. Flip her back over. And that should be relatively centered. Yeah, it is. We'll, we'll, we'll straighten it out as we do the rest. So now, now you can just come in. Hold it into place. Good. And then start going back and forth between the pins. There you go. So there's the first first solder. Pretty straightforward. Solder is like metal hot glue. Solder is like low temperature TIG welding. You're all you're all true. Uh, generally I run my iron at 650 degrees. And when I'm done, I go in and give it a little clean here on the copper pad. If I'm desoldering, I will go ahead and uh, go up to 750 if I'm trying to take solder off of something. But generally, I stick to 650. Yeah, smell. who smells cooked tuna? Anybody smell cooked tuna? OK, so now we need, we're going to go up to the top here. We need a 104, that's a 102 capacitor. Okay, 102 capacitor goes right here. Come on now. Oh, wait. 102 or 104? Did that say 104? Aha! One hundred and four. Make sure you're uh, watching the numbers. They're kind of small on these now. You might need a magnifying glass. I'm almost getting to that point where I'm going to need a magnifying glass for these guys. Or I'm going to need a big uh, screen to go along with my camera. Some kind of big screen to, do, to handle it. So there you go. So there's the capacitor, right? You can see him. Solder him into place. Good, looks clean. 
Seriously, getting old sucks. Now, I do like to uh, save my clippings. Oh, this is a bad example because the clippings are so tiny. But I like to save my clippings because there are spaces where you'll have to jump to leads in some kits. So that's generally what I like to do there. Okay. Brown, green, red resistor at the 1.5K. So where are you at? One K five right there. Brown, green, red. So now you get to play the uh, the capacitor game. Not not capacitor game, resistor game. Brown, green, red, right here. Okay. Yeah, capacitor resistor is not the same thing. Don't be fooled. <laughs> and just a reminder, we will be going to the Discord after chat after this. So if you have questions or whatever, related to ham radio. It doesn't have to be kit related or anything like that. Feel free to follow along over there. I do have too fine of a tip on this actually, this iron. The pads on these are extremely forgiving. So a fine tip really isn't needed. And you'll do a bit better heat transfer. That was a little bit cold solder. There we go. Okay, you see that solder coming through that joint? Now snip the leads. Okay, very good. All right, yellow, violet, orange resistor is next. Okay, yellow, violet, orange is the 47K resistor, which is right there. Almost cut it. <laughs> I use the needle nose. I hold it like this, and then I kind of fold them over and fold the legs over so they're kind of spaced appropriately. So you can see them like that. Okay, 47K goes right here. Oh, not bent enough, see? Not bent enough. This is actually a bit tighter bend, so I'm going to come back in here and fold them over. Okay, pull the legs apart when you before you do this. It helps hold them into place. And then apply heat to both the pin and the solder pad. And you're not really putting the solder onto the, the iron tip. You're putting it into the joint that is created between the tip, the pin, and the board. Once you have a universally applied heat, across the components, the solder will flow and you'll get a nice clean solder, just like that.
Resistors are not directional. Capacitors can be, but sometimes are not. So keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, the PN222A NPN transistor, which is at Q1. I'm still drinking that pickle beer. It's actually making me um, salivate. <laughs> It's kind of not expected. <laughs> All right, so here's the here's the transistor location, which I believe is this guy, but we will double check. Ooh, buddy. Getting hard to see those things. I'm going to need a... Uh... Okay, not this guy. Come on. Yep, that's it. Okay, so the transistors go right here, but you can see the legs are not splayed out appropriately for that. So I come in here like this, and I take the one, bend it out, bend out the leg like that, take the back leg, kick it out some, and then do a, a second bend on each one. And if you did it right, which I kind of did it right, we'll see if it lines up, it should just fall right in. Close. There we go. Pretty, pretty close. Like that. A little too high, though. These pads actually take a lot of solder to get them where they need to be. Hey, thanks. Uh, who is it? Carlos, thank you for being a member. Hello, everyone. Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for watching this uh, Me Make a Radio, hopefully. We'll see how it all goes. Do got a lot of solders to get through, though. A lot of these are the big components, though, which is goes pretty quick. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's pretty not bad. A pickle beer. I kind of like it. I got I to say. Okay, so the uh, 82 picofarad disc capacitors, there's two of them. And they are, let's see. Where are they? Those are 104s. No fours. Where are you? Are these just little guys? Nope. Three thirty one. One oh two. Oh, you're not seeing that. Sorry about that. It's so tiny, these little guys. One oh two. What are these guys labeled? Am I not? Yeah, they're 82s, right? Yeah, I think those are them. Those little, little bitty guys. Now we're going to double check. We're going to double check here. There's an 82 right there. Oh, geez. And if you're looking, if you're following on in the instructions at home, 
you'll see that um, we're doing the yellow components, which is stage one. All right, so we need quantity two and 82, one, R is just inserted. Interesting. Very interesting instructions. It's not actually the most um, clear instructions. So we've got the 82s right there. And then I think this one, they say just place it. One at 82 and one at writ R. R is just inserted and not soldered. Very odd. Yeah, it says uh, at R I T R is the label. In fact, let me let me bring up the closer instructions. I'm looking a little far to make this work. Okay, so we've got the resistor. We've got the 82s right there, but it's not soldered into place yet. We have the transistor. We've got the 47K. We haven't put the diode in, and we haven't put the power in. We will get to that. And we have the other um, capacitor right there. So I'm, I'm willing to bet that we're out of capacitors, and it mentions 2x82s right there. So I think that is look at the RIT vertical next on your 5 o'clock. Hmm. Rit R is down in the socket you soldered. Oh, <laughs> I see it right there. Okay. So then this guy is not the one. Get him out of there. So this is a point 0.1 capacitor right there. So I'm going to move him back. Okay, hold on. I'm going to move the instructions a little bit. <clears throat> 101. Okay, so we're going to go. Let's get this guy in place because he's the right guy, at least for right now. And we'll look at the other one. All right, so now we need a 100 picofarad 101 quantity 2, one at RIT-BE and one at RIT-EG. Both are just inserted, not soldered. Very interesting. What's the last one? Where is the... Uh... So where's this one? So let me, let me go back a step here. So there's this 1.1 right here which is on the yellow parts list. This point one is on the yellow parts list. Point one, disc cap, 104. 
Two. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, never mind. So we just need one. We need another one of those. I skipped the step. The instructions are, everybody has their own. Let me let me go and show the instructions so you can you can understand what I'm saying here. So, right here. You can see they call out like the, the, the part. So this is a one, okay, 0.1 microfarad disc ceramic capacitor. And then it says quantity two. So that implies that you need to go get two of those suckers and then find out where they belong on the PCB. Or you could do what other people are recommending, which is actually go and uh, and pull up the schematic. That's fine. You know, that, that makes sense. So this is the um, the 104, which should be, I think, this guy. Yep. Okay. God, sometimes you can just pull them out from the card. Not these guys. These guys are in there good. So you got to snip them. Okay, so this guy, give him a little move. And hey, for everybody watching, he goes uh, caught up on the expanse. Whew. That last episode was good. Okay, so now we got little guy there is in place. So we're going to solder him too. Can you post a link to the instructions when you have a chance? So, uh, Dusty, if you go to the description, there is a link to the QRP Me website, and I am building the Little Squall, and the instructions are about uh, most of the way down on that page. It's uh, posted in the description. Okay. All right, so here's here's something I, I let me go ahead and flip this back over so you guys can see. So here's okay, so I got that capacitor in place. So here's something I need to understand. This guy, this uh this writ. What's that about? So we're gonna place different capacitors in the RIT positions. For what? <laughs> what's oh, what's the what's the purpose? I don't think I get it. So there's a an R and an I and a T, and it's they're right here. R, I, and T. And these two pairs are yellow versus this pair is not. Oh, Matt Quince is on the expanse for the second time, right on. Also, I don't understand the nomenclature of the R. R is just inserted, but then why the B and the E G? Interesting. Uh, just the receive increment. Oh, 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 so it's literally writ. Boy, boy, howdy. Okay, let me let me get that in there. Uh, we're gonna go here. There's the R. We're gonna find that other eighty-two. Another 104. Okay. Leave him out for a second. Lots of 104s. Okay, these guys are going to go live together. These guys are going to go live together. You get the idea. 151. 102. I don't know if I need it. Well, I need it to, to get the electrons flowing but um I, I'll, I'll figure it out when we get to the actual use case of, of running it because we'll be we'll be off shifted if if we don't line it up right 82 okay so here's the the funny bit about these 82s is they're already pre-splayed out so you're gonna have to go in and uh straighten them out Do you guys see that okay there you go so you're gonna have to go in and Kind of get them back together here. Oh, 
I haven't been stressed out enough recently, so I thought, hey, Josh, why not do a live build? You haven't done one of those in a while. Don't you like being stressed out? And I was like, you know what? You're right, Josh. Okay, so something like that. He lives on that little board there in the R position. All right. Good stuff. That's pretty clean looking, though. I got to say, I like this camera. <laughs> this camera and lens is a good combo on a, on a tabletop. Okay, uh, next one. All right, so now we're... Now we got to figure this other one out. Let's take a look at this. So the um, the 100 picofarad disk capacitors go in the BE and EG on the RIT. Both are inserted. Not oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I see it now. There's another over here. There it is. Okay, so you know I'm I figured it out. I just had to look at it again. Because we missed a set of uh, pin headers right there, or sockets. So another socket goes in right like that. So let's flip her over, apply a little heat to hold her into place, add some solder, go back on the socket to straighten it, hold it until it cools, good. And then go to the other side. Okay, let's check that it's true. Looks pretty true to me. Yeah, are we gonna go until I'm done, guys? Should I just keep going? I don't think I'm gonna stop to make a poll. What do you think? Should I keep going? Just keep going until I'm done? I don't got anybody following up after me, right? Is nobody trying to live stream after me? RCO Video Jack is... Wait, power? Wait, what? This is a... Come on. The power is an RCA jack? Get out of here. What? Oh, I misunderstood that. I thought it was going to be... Well, hell, that's problematic. Yeah. Oh, and you got to chop the legs off this guy. That's kind of odd, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, now I've got a, ay ay ay, got a hack an RCA cable connector to make that work. Really, that's that is so okay. This this is a little this pisses me off a little bit. Let me go. Let me go back here. Where is she? Yeah, look at this. This is on their website. So I can see what the version 2 has that this one doesn't. Anybody knows what's right next to that uh, that jack? That RCA jack? That screw-in connector? Notice the screw posts for the uh, power control, the terminals? That would be preferred. Now I've got to figure out some solution to make it work. Um, well, let me, let me flip back over here so you can see it. So here's the power. I've got it flipped over. So this leaves some to, uh, the imagination but i can tell you that that looking at the pin is probably your positive like the your positive and that's your negative or your 
you're neutral. So I can just um, solder some pigtails off of this and use the power supply with alligator clips that way. I can do that. Get an RCA cable with power poles. Um, hmm. You know what? Let me see if I've got that. Hold on. Oh, Don, you're going to like this. Look what I got. See, this is why you always buy extras of things. I needed an RCA splitter. And I have an RCA splitter. Ta-da. <laughs> so what we're going to have to do is, is uh, make an Anderson's connector with these guys uh, after we check the, I'm assuming the pin is the pin here. But uh, could be, actually, wait, it's a splitter. Oh, I got to be careful with this one. This is going to be two. So I can almost lop off one of them. Yeah, nobody in particular. I think you probably got the right the right answer is just make a power pole connector and solder it to the board. Yeah, what's the over under on on, on my killing this thing, huh? Oh, we got to figure this out because we're at the stage where um, we're going to have to do that. But let's let's get the capacitors in while I think about that for a little while. So let me go back to my display here. Okay, so I got to grab those 101s and put them in the BGs and EGs. The pin headers soldered. All right, where'd those 101s go? Four seventy one oh two. <laughs> Dusty says ninety percent. This is this thing is gonna toast. That'd be funny. Let's let's well, hey, let's let's blow it up. We'll have fun either way. 101, where's those 102s? As you can see, I'm trying to uh, find my, my parts here. Okay, what's a foot here? Can you make it an antenna? Ah, I don't think so. Uh, Tom L. So you can use this radio as a technician once it's all done. Uh, let's see. What am I missing? Where are my Where are my one oh ones? Come on now, with the where are the 101s? These are 102s. These are both 102s, so you go live there. Well, that's not good. So this is advertising. 101s are the 100 pico caps. One goes across the B. Uh, yes, correct. SC Flowers, you got it. You, you're, you're right in there. The question is, is where are the 101s? <laughs> they only have 102s. Uh, 
Uh, SC Flowers, correct. That's what I'm saying. I, I, they're not here, though. <laughs> I don't see them. I only have, I have 102s. That's as close as it gets. Missing something? These are 104s. Yeah, these are all 104s. 331. 470. 102. Uh, there are no unmarked caps, 102. This is 151. Mm, did I accidentally solder them on earlier? Nope. Where's my handy light? There it is. There is no other bag. There is no other bag. This is supposed to be bag one. We're not even out of bag one yet, guys. Um. Okay. So that's depressing. Am I just blind? Is this? No, it's one fifty one. Wow. Really great. Okay, somebody's saying, I got two 101s here. They look like the ones in the first column, fourth row of your parts bin. Well, so if I'm looking at uh, fourth row, I'm thinking one, I'm thinking one, two, three, four, fourth column. I don't see any. Don't see it. 102 close enough. Um, I may have to go grab some capacitors. You've got a microscope, right? So let's 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 engage Mr. Scopey scope here. Yeah, go pull what I need out of the 7300. Bottom left up one. This is a, that is a 470. Well, this is going to be a fun, fun chat. Let's, let's test out the microscope since we're here. Oh, it's upside down. Why is it upside down? Let me flip this, guys. Hold on. Ooh, buddy, look at that. Now, I just grabbed one as an example. Like bingo, but for capacitors. <laughs> oh, yeah. 102s ain't going to do it. Well, that's incredibly frustrating.
Am I reading this right? So let's everybody check my math here because uh, we're dead in the water. I'm going to have to go grab a bunch of uh, capacitors and, and get back here in a second. So this is what we're looking at. We're on, um, yes, my chair is not me. I'm not there. I'm over here. 100 pico farad disc ceramic caps, 101s, quantity 2, one at RIT BE and one at RIT EG. Both are just inserted, not soldered. Well, everybody's got me freaked out that I already soldered them, but I am uh, positive that I didn't. And I uh, see this is this is not what I like to do. Just so everybody knows I normally do a parts rundown. You know, I'll, I'll look at all the parts and make sure I've got everything before I start live. But I wanted to be all cool and open the the fresh the fresh tuna can live. I thought that'd be a lot of fun. So I took a lot of faith. That's a 104 right here. This is an 82. That's an 82. And this one is a 104. This one is an 82. So no, yeah, no, they're not. No bueno. Okay, what's the next step? What's in the socket? An 82. An 82 is in the socket. Well, this is frustrating. Uh, either way, they're not soldered. Well, yeah, but then we're not going to... I guess uh, these should be grounded, so we should be able to get by without them. Do you think? How many watts? I don't even know if this puts out a watt, my dude. <laughs> let's let's uh, take a break of the action and, and uh, build up that Anderson's. Instructions say bag one has four caps. Two 100 picofarads, two correct. So it doesn't have any 102s. And why is it saying add the 102s? Uh, no, there. Okay, so no, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. So who who said that? Somebody mentioned uh, David. David, you're on the you're on the pulse here. So the what's in the bag right so let's do to do to do let's go right here um where is it 101 yeah so it calls out what's in which bag by the way i didn't get any any more than one bag <laughs> this goes all the way up to bag five i'm guessing it's i'm guessing that this is because i have a little squall uno instead of dos so that's probably why this that's happening. Um, but it is not mentioning bag one having anything other than blue parts. I don't have any blue parts. Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. What's the value of these guys? So are the 102s the same thing? Am I just being difficult about this? Ah, yeah. OK, 
came in squall dose. It's in the dose, bruh. You didn't get the dose. Alrighty, we're gonna do a quick, uh, quick Anderson's job here. Oh, you know what? I don't need it. Well, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm not doing that. I've, I've decided. I'll do the Andersons after. We want to see if this thing goes uh, kablamo or not. Is let's see. Okay. My only problem is I've got, like, I don't have a good red wire. I have plenty of black wire, but not a good red wire. So that's a little concerning. Oh, there's no way I'm not going to short this out if I do this. I'm going to have to snip it really close. Yeah. I don't have a big enough red wire for this. I like where your head's at, whoever said red tape. You you got 100 internets for that. Good good reminder. Thank you. Make it real pronounced there. Real pretty. All right, so it sounds like I have the wrong instructions, potentially. Where'd you find the, uh, who posted that? Nobody in particular? Where are the original instructions? I do, I do need another beer. You're right. That's a true statement. Uh, let's see. Who sent me? Nobody in particular. Can you send me it on the Discord? Yeah, nobody in particular. It's, you're not going to be able to on the YouTube side. Can you fire it off on the Do you have it on the Discord? We just got to double check it before, because we're we're at stage one, where we're gonna test this thing. While that's going on, I'm gonna grab another beer. Now this one I'm excited about. Oh, is Matt in the house? Matt, AE4MQ, check this out, and everybody that grew up in the '90s. Oh, buddy, the lacto cooler. I'm getting mad high C ecto cooler slimer vibes from this. This mat is a flavored Berliner Weiss beer or ale. Voodoo Brewing Company. Made in PA. I have no idea what to expect with this. It just looks cool. Oh, nobody in particular posted in live stream. All right, buddy. Thanks. Hold on.
I can say uh, that I'm neither for nor against pickle beer, and I'm assuming that the um, the spicy one, or I'm sorry, the sour one is not the way to go. Nobody in particular with the hookup. Here we go. Let's see if this is it. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Okay. I think you're right. Let's go to the let's go to the replay. Oh, it's only 2011. <laughs> uh, go slow and take your time. Too late, guys. How about you do it live? List of the parts kit. Who does that? Moving on. Female straight header. Sip socket. All right. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, taking the time, though. One of, I don't have capacitors like that. I don't have the uh, ceramics. I've got the the like vinyl coated ones. Yeah, there's the low band, low pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Wait, it's in a different order. Oh my god. Well, why didn't they just do this with the other one? This is like way easier. <laughs> Okay, I guess we're doing this in a bit. Yeah, this is a different kit board. The board is completely different. It is true. That's not. I have this. I have this board. <laughs> I'm. I don't understand because this one doesn't say Little Squall Two, but the case does. I yeah. I'm. I guess I'm between versions. I'm. I'm a a little Little Squall One Point Five. The beer is green, folks. It's slightly tinted green. It's great. All right, so we're back to the one that I've actually got here. We're not going <laughs> to... Thank you, nobody in particular. You've, you've at least helped us to point out that we don't have the right the right thing. Um, so what's the over-under on the, uh, the 102s running as 101s? Two boards with one part. That's right. Let's see. It's not like dark green, but it's... <laughs> oh, my God. It's lime flavored. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh man, I wasn't expecting that. Tell you what, I wasn't expecting a Berliner, a Berliner Weiss uh, with uh, lime flavor. I'm good. I'm still here. Oh, man. Whew. All right, hold on. So the other curiosity I have is, you know, just forgoing that uh, aspect of it right now because we don't need it for writ. Right? I don't need that to start the board up. Or is that a uh, a foolish thought that I have? Let's see. These are not my caps. These are all my resistors. These are 104s. Okay.
fun fun. Ow. Dad. More parts. Nicholas Hopkins, uh, now's not the time to talk in Discord. We do that later. If we ever get there after I yeet this thing into the uh into the ecto beer. Uh honey who moved my capacitors. Uh I've got I've got a box of them somewhere. I don't know where they are. That's not good. They were supposed to be in that in that organizer and they're not there. Well, since we're at this point, um I'm curious if we even need it, right? So if it's writ Well, no, it's okay. Solder the SIP sockets. Resistor, transistor, one microfarad cap, one of the 82 picofarad caps, RCA jack, and the diode. Ah, oh, the diode. I need to do the diode. Install a shorting jumper in RIT I. Okay. In lieu of an optional crystal shifting indicator, use a small piece of clipped component lead for the jumper. Fine, fine. Um, use a small piece of cook component lead, inspect your handiwork, install a crystal, install crystal and caps in the proper OSC and RIT fun pins. Oh, that's not bad, Cyan. No, the, the one, well, remember, uh, 102s are going to use for the next steps. Well, let me do that diode. All right. So much fun messing around with. Okay. Now, now we really got to test our eyes, folks. Let's get the um the old microscope out. Oh, we lost a light too. Boy, things are just going my way. Is that the right diode? That's not the right diode. Yep, that's it. Zach Shack Radio, congrats on passing your general. 
<laughs> Somebody said the microscope sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's like probably a $20 Amazon special. <laughs> sucks real bad. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to use those 102s. So we're just going to sally forth, uh, keep going, and then we're going to hope we see uh, extra parts. All right, moving right along. The key or not to, boy, I didn't expect to get that in the instructions. So what are these supposed to be blue part? Okay, blue parts, fine. Easy, easy, easy. Ooh, this, uh, this ecto beer, that's a thing, man. Okay. What are we looking for? Red, red, red resistor. Heck yeah. Two point two K is not there. Hold on. There's two K, not two point two K. Two point two K. Is that it? Blue. Yep, that's that's it. Boom. Um, hmm. I'm wondering. I might want to just add the Discord folks in this and just keep it going. Maybe we do that. Maybe we'll go a little wild today. How's that sound? Do I dare uh, add the Discord voice folks to this whole uh, menagerie? All right, 2.7K. Well, I know I got Dawn in the house, too. Dawn is a wealth of knowledge. There's a lot of people. Nobody in particular is in there, too. So I'm sure we could get this. We might actually not explode this. So if you want to get in on that fun, maybe consider joining us on the Discord. Don't get to, don't get, 
don't get crazy though, because we'll yeet you out of there if you're trying to get away with some nonsense. All right, where's that 2.7? Team Chaos, give it to the give the Discord the beans and demonetized. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, guys. Let's not get me to no demonetized today, okay? That's ten K. That's not it. Where is this supposed to go? Resistor. Oh, standing up in the holes just above the right of the ring? Huh? <laughs> oh, it's a stander upper. Is that it? It's this guy. It's this guy right here. Okay. So stander uppers are, if you've ever built a pixie, that's where you take you take the resistor straight up and you have to keep the lead together and fold it over the top so that you're left with like this U-turn pin, okay? And that goes, the pixie kits are almost entirely the stander upper jobs, which is not really a fun, it, it, it's, it, it saves space, let me put it that way, but it's not, it's not that great. Yeah, so if you, if you guys wanna jump in the Discord, I'm gonna flip over there in a second. For everybody that's joining for the first time on the Discord, just keep in mind that um, you, you do have to join the Discord and then wait a couple of minutes before it lets you get into the voice stream. And how it works is you're going to go to the hashtag live stream. That's where the uh, chat is. And above that is, or just below that, is the voice chat component. Okay, so there's the there's the little bit there. I'm letting my right my light recharge. I'm gonna replace this light. I don't like this overhead light, so that's the next on my list to replace. Brown, black, orange is next. Nailed it right there. Explain the PTT, Josh. The push to talk? It's uh it's like uh, all those walkie talkies you had growing up. <laughs> it's the button that makes it go quackity quackity quack. Yeah, no video on the live stream. You um you'll just have to keep watching me on YouTube. Uh nobody in particular. Have I ever had a demonetized video? Uh, yeah, but not like um not like banned. I've had copyright claims. That's a thing that happens for using if if um what has sometimes happened to me is I'll get a I'll, I'll use copyrighted songs that weren't copyrighted at the time but then somebody swoops in and buys all the rights to something and then they'll say oh hey you used our songs illegally it's like well dog you just this video has been up for you know 4 years and I I have the um agreement that I that I made with the creator and they're like, oh, no, we own all that now. It's like, well, okay. And then it's like, well, what am I going to do? Do I go uh, battle them for, well, we had an agreement and da-da-da-da-da. It's like, what, are you going to go get a lawyer to do that? No, that's fine. I'll just take the, I'll just make the video private. You're not going to get any of my money. <laughs> You're not going to get any money. All the 50 cents that that video made, I'm not going to let you get one penny of it. Nice bridge. Get out of here. I don't bridge solder. Where did I bridge solder? Where? Those are supposed to be connected. They're already connected together. Is it? Oh, wait. You might be right. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a bridge? Well, there's a fast way to check this. That just made it worse. Oh, damn it. Now I really did it. No, nah, it's supposed to be like that. You're screwing with me.
I think that's supposed to be. Yeah, that's connected pads. Okay. Uh, well, okay, here we go. We're gonna... We're going to the after chat. How's it going, after chat? Space bar is a bad choice. How's it going, live it is. chat? Most of the time, I just use slash the after key. chat. Am I making it? Hello. And I like the right shift. Oh, what the hell? I'm We're not... live. Okay, hold on. Oh, that's why. Okay, hold on. Yeah, Josh, we're not hearing you in Discord, but how about now? There we go. There, yep, there, there you are. All right. Well, you guys, um, in the oh man, it tastes like a popsicle. Oh, that beer is too much. Um, so you're you're live right now on the uh, on the YouTube side. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Okay, so let's continue on. There's those 102s. Those 102s come into play right now. We, we, learn, more, we learn more when we watch you screw up, so, so keep doing the good job you're doing, Josh. That's right. That's right. See, I'm super, super valuable, right? Yeah. yeah well, you know, the magic smoke, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. One of these Learned days, I'll make failures. that smoky porter. One of these days, I'll make the uh, the don't let the smoke out porter. Yeah, there that uh, Matt. I still we still gotta do a brew thing. I want to do that. I just we need. Yeah, we'll time. do it. I need the time, buddy. I know you don't. <laughs> you don't have much time either. You know we're both uh, busy people. See, those are supposed to be together. Capacitor and resistor, they live together on this pad together. That's where they live, okay, guys? So we're good. So uh, today, my beer of choice uh, is a uh, hazy IPA that I kegged yesterday. Nice. Fresh. All right, now we can hey, install sir. the key jack. Where's the key at? Key. All right. Bam. Keys are always fun to install because they uh they've got little legs and they make it incredibly easy to install. They hold themselves on the board. I'm gonna be amazed if this thing works. So you've got to basically fill in all of those holes before the thing is actually done, mm. right? Yeah, technically, though, we were supposed to have stopped to test the oscillator. But I'm a little worried about those missing capacitors, those 101s. But right. I, I swear, I don't have any 101s here. There's no 101s here on this table. So the idea, the the prevalent idea is that if we keep going um, and we fill this board out, which, by the way, it's going to go a little bit faster as we keep going here. Don't worry mm -hmm. about that. Um, we'll, we'll get to a point where we have parts left that, you know, I may be able to use. It could have been the reason that those things were just setting in the board was they were part of the test, but I don't don't know. Well, it's supposed to be a part of that writ um, section. But then the curiosity is, okay, if it's for writ, do I have to have them? But yeah, I'm assuming I do. I have to jump them somehow. So then, okay, that's fine. The curiosity is, isn't writ though usually yeah, something you can adjust them, yeah. so it's kind of weird that somebody's it's just got, a single value somebody's got a hot mic if they could stop that that'd be great it it's don when he keys up oh, he, okay. he's listening to the youtube on the youtube side as well yeah. so it's not really hot it's that the youtube playback slightly behind our voices dang oh, dodo ms that slight feedback i turned it off I just turned volume down on my computer, on my television. Look at that spicy tip on that soldering iron. Yes. 
Yeah, my my soldering tips will go cold at the tip. I don't know why. They just stop being hot at the tip, and I have to keep replacing them. What kind of iron? It's do you because have? the uh, the center of the irons are eroded out, and the thing is left is the coating that that chromium coating or the coating on them that tin coating stays. Mm-hmm. That copper erodes out the center of them. Why does it happen so damn fast, though? <laughs> you use it a lot. You no, either I use it a lot or your iron's set too hot. Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, it's probably set too hot. Do do you let it sit for long periods of time in between soldering? Like you'll fire it up, let it warm up, and then try to go to it and leave it sitting for a while? Not really. I, I don't use it all that often. Um, so there's a question. I mean, Question in the chat. Uh, Jampscan asks, do I normally lay out um, my parts? Yes, I do. I normally lay them all out, but this whole thing comes in this can. And so the idea was I would pop this top live and we'd, we'd do it. So that was, uh, I did, I made that uh, executive decision. I should have laid them all out um, when I was doing my stream prep so that we were ready to go. But Josh didn't do that. So. No, you wanted to open the cool package. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted you all to experience the, the joy of the of the tuna can. And and at the end of this, we'll get a recommendation from you on a buy or not buy, right? Well, I mean, I'm probably a bad person to listen to on this one if I'm doing the whole thing on a live stream, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I, I, I'm not necessarily blaming the kid at this point yet. I might have screwed something up with those 101s that have yet to be found. But as of right now, I, I don't see where they would be. Yeah, I mean... Oh, did you get your uh, Step IR working? I did. It wasn't the Step IR's fault. I had a burnt... Uh, some kind of problem with a jumper... Um, out at the grounding. I, I moved all my coax and I've got a good path to my uh, service ground now in a nice little metal junction box outside my house. And I was using a very large, uh, what do they call those? Chokes. And I think that the jumper between that choke and the, uh, the lightning protectors, something happened to it. I've got to check it. But once I took that out and tested it, it we were totally back on the air. Oh, good. Okay. So you can hook this up to the step IR then. That's what you're saying. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. A couple of people at me on the chat here. It's actually for the oscillator function that the 100 picofarads are required. See bottom center of the schematic. RIT on a CW rig is important because you have to listen to the frequency from when you transmit by 600 hertz or wherever. Yeah, no, I, I understand when we need it. And then David Myers says, it won't hurt. Use those 102s and see if it works. Miracles happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if we'll see how that if, goes. Yeah, you can only do that, though, if they're left over at the end. If if you yes. actually need them, then yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay, so we're now... I, I'm not seeing where the second header is. So now we can go back to the instructiones here. So if you... um. If you see here, we're doing the blue po- components, which is for the keying interface. And there are, I, I've already soldered them. There's a two pin header and a three pin header side by side. And it says that there is a, a male header connector, female shorting jumpers for RIT and one later in mods, and then a three to one male connector. So I'm, I'm not seeing that either on the, uh, on the board here or the instructions. Am I just missing it? Weren't the long pins supposed to go up and the short pins go in the PCB? Mm, maybe. Not No, because you, you throw jumpers on them. Am I wrong? Doesn't matter. Those jumpers don't really work for this. That was just me thinking out loud to myself. Well, yeah, you had a picture up of the actual finished product from the website, and what you're doing looks similar. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's right, though. 
going into hour two almost here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got the, the one RIT connector here, the TNR connector here. It said there was another one, but I'm not seeing them. I'm not seeing where that goes. No, again, we're we're going we're sallying forth. Did I not solder that? No, I did. Okay. Looks like we're we're going on, and then we got uh one last another transistor here, the three three oh nine oh six three nine oh six. Yep, this is it. Yeah, so for those watching on the YouTube, uh, we do have the Discord chat open. If you go to live after chat, that is where people are talking, and we can hear you on the live stream. Well, we're just kind of watching you solder right now. So I'm not above uh, people coming in and having ham radio questions answered if they want to try and do that. We're just kind of watching and say, is he going to burn his fingers this time? This time? Maybe this time? <laughs> right. Kind of reminds me of that one guy at work that used to say, I love watching people work. I could do it for hours. Well, it's always fun to see, to, to, to watch somebody else solder and, you know, be able to go, oh, look at that solder bridge. Yeah, I can, I can sit and watch Callum run uh, pileups for two hours. I mean, just pretty much anything that's related to radio, I can sit and watch. Callum's pretty entertaining when he runs a pile up, though, because he, mm -hmm. he 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 pushes people around and they do what he says, not what they want. Yeah, well, unless it's that idiot that keeps trying to jam in. But okay, so it it sounds like, boy howdy, it sounds like uh, if we're if we're following along with the chat, that the the voltage the reg it's it's basically a voltage divider that the that the RIT functions here control. So I'm I'm wondering if we can try powering this thing on because we do have a key connected now. And I am on 70 centimeters. Let me get my So the curiosity is is it, it didn't say anything about connecting an antenna. So how does how does that work? <laughs> I guess we don't have a final yet. We don't have the PA, yeah. so you're not gonna you're not gonna burn out the finals because there's nothing no there's either. there's nothing there yet. But then, yeah. how am I supposed to hear for it? Because it says you can you can listen to it. There was something in the instructions about using something to listen to it with. Josh, people in the comments have been trying to point out that you're using the version three instructions and you have a version four board. Does are you aware of that? Well, where is the version four instructions? That is information I do not have. Yes. So that's that's my problem. Regardless, yeah. we're, we're following the silk screening. Um, so the silk screening is still on point. I know for a fact point. them radio waves is harmful. In the, in the, uh, hey, in thank the you, can, the current source. In, in the can, there should be a, uh, a little, like, piece of paper that it points you to the instruction website. <laughs> there is not. <laughs> there I know, was, I know. There was not. <laughs> so if you go to um so it's with those two resistors. Right, 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 right. Oh, what just happened there? Or on the bottom of the lid that you threw away. No, that was clear plastic. 
no, the metal pole lid. No, that wasn't. There was nothing on there. So let me go back up here. Oh, that got weird. What happened? This is supposed to be version three, right? So everybody says. Version four is what version four. Booty said. Yeah. Um, they said you had a version four. Then somebody else said you had a version two. So I don't. Because <laughs> well, it would seem I... like like that one that you looked at with it had the the power connector. That looked like an upgrade to me. Yeah, so look, it's a little squall. There's no version number on it. Yeah. But I didn't expect this tuna can to be a... Uh... Now, now, if you look at your board, you have the two, you have two little uh, things next to the uh, little squall. There's a, I don't know what it was, but I saw it on there. It's like a little yeah, cloud they're... or something. It's a little happy face. Oh, it's a happy face. What Possibly. ver is screen on the board? So I'm showing it's version 4, 1 14. <laughs> mm. So let me let me go back here. You can see it. See? Yeah. No. Little yeah, squall you're... 2. Little squall 2, version 4. Yeah. Uh, I ran in a zoom. Hold on. Yeah, I see it. Version 4. Fun little adventure. Oh, Take a look is this? on the builder's date. It is uh one fourteen. <laughs> well, shoot, I was gonna be like, hey, it's a good, good uh board to start out with. If you're new to soldering, go right in and make it a <laughs> like. Well, there's the instructions for it. <laughs> well, there, there's no uh, uh surface mount at least. But... Okay, well, I think we're in the same position. I think at this point, we can power this on. So mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the instructions we have. We don't need to necessarily... Where are they? Right there. Uh, what does this thing take? 12 volts? Uh, nine to... Nine to okay, I'm going to dial this way back yeah. then. So I'm using... Let's go here. Make sure you get a full shot if it decides to blow. I've got a mini power supply right here, so I'm going to dial this way down to 9 volts. Okay. So oh, is the uh, check the uh, smoke? If you don't let smoke out, you're good? <laughs> well, we're going to see something. The, the instruction said there was a way that you could listen to something. Yeah, said. somebody in the chat said it's uh, 7.122. No. Yeah, that's odd because you haven't even put the crystal on yet. So. Right. Hold on. Um, I do have a key too. If we want to get fancy, if the the oscillator works, so let's uh. <laughs> Here we go. You want to try it? Let's go. This is straight key only, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, we're all splayed out there. I see nothing. <laughs> I see nothing. Nothing. And I'm going to turn this off for a second before I plug the key in. I thought that was Frank. That was Frank. Yeah. You should sure. need RIT for the oscillator to work, though. No, I didn't think so. Unless you need to ground it. Or jump it. 
Well, I mean, it's not smoking, so short of being able to hear it. Yeah, I didn't see anything go pop. No, it, it didn't say you needed the crystal. It said that you would uh you could just all right, so let me let me go back up to step one here. Yeah, it said something about you could have another crystal device and Inspect, listen to it. Uh, oh. <laughs> Inspect your handiwork. Install crystal and caps in proper OSC and RIT fun pins. Oh, okay. Oh, okay then. So let's do that. So I didn't do that. So who knows? I might have already killed it. Um, no. Unplug it first. The... Okay, hold on. I'm getting back on the center frequency. I don't. I don't think you could kill it by having nothing in something. There we go. Disconnected. All right. So let's see. All right. So crystal goes in X tall. Crystal is in Xtal, and we need to jump something, so let's do that. Uh, okay. Solder the SIP rep. Bup, bup, bup. Install a shorting jumper in RIT I in lieu of an optional crystal shifting indu uh, inductor, which we do not have. So we will make a jumper. Okay, got a little piece of clipping. That's a thick, that's a thick boy. That might be too thick. In fact, I know that's too thick. Hey, Josh, so uh, Jamscan here. Yo. So uh, what I was talking about earlier is um, you're kind of soldering component by component. Do you ever lay out like all of your through hole components through the board and then just solder everything? Yeah. Normally I do, but um, we were having such a messed up time with a lot of this stuff and finding some of those missing components that I didn't want to, I didn't want to screw something up, but yeah, normally I'll, I'll just lay a bunch of stuff. I'll get them all placed and get the legs spread out on them. And then I'll come back and solder them. It's usually way faster doing that. Gotcha. Yeah, right on. I haven't really built too many kits myself, but I, I'm finding myself uh, doing a lot more soldering uh, the past uh, year and a half or so. So I'm actually thinking about uh, upgrading my soldering iron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hacko that Josh was pointing out earlier is really good. I got a hacko about six months ago after my uh, my last kit build which I streamed on uh, YouTube and people were yelling at me about how bad my soldering iron was. <laughs> and it's night uh, and day. The it's soldering iron day. that the tech uses at my CB shop, that's the only thing he uses is high cos. I got to say that uh, I, I, I solder okay, but I got to say most of it's a good iron. It, it's not me having some kind of glorious skill. I just have a decent iron. Okay, so we've got crystal. We've got a jumper. You've got a capacitor. We're missing some other capacitors, which could this could spell the end of the of the live stream here. But I think the belief is that this isn't gonna this is a writ adjustment. It's not going to blow it up, but who knows? So I'm gonna push power. We got everybody looking directly at the board here. So everybody's eyes are peeled. Here we go. Nothing. Yeah, but what would you expect? Do you have a receiver on? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to stop that for a second. Do you have a FLIR camera? <laughs> no. I bet we do need to jump these. I'm pretty sure we got to jump them, these other ones. Yeah. I don't think this is going to work without jumping them. So I'm going to take this out for right now. 
Ugh, come on. There is that writ jumper that's open. I don't know if you need a jumper on it. Uh, so, what was the action here? Yeah, right. I'm going to go buy a FLIR camera after this. No. Well, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> they make a nice one for the iPhone. No, it's not that great. No? Mm-mm. No, if you've ever seen a commercial one, no. Nothing that... No, not compared to a commercial. Yeah, we have commercial ones that work. Yeah, so the R... Oh, sorry, the T is not mentioned in the instructions. You can get a flare for 330 bucks. Yeah. Maybe add that to the list in the future. Yeah. But it's just RIT not I is covered. Thing. RIT I, and then you get RIT EG and RIT VE, which, or again, we're talking about RIT here, and then there is uh, where you put the crystal, there is a BG and an EG off the side. All right, let's just keep going. That's fine. I'm going to disconnect this guy for right now. Although I'm not, the, the power supply is not feeding any power. All right, audio, green parts. Oh, there's not that much left. Okay. Get that key out of here. Okay. Oh, missed one. Missed one. Yeah, if you have uh, issues with what the instructions call themselves, whether it's writ or not writ, you got to take that up with those guys. All right, so now we're going to do the N uh, one N nine one four and one N four one four eight diode. Okay, diode time. Which we're gonna go back to the microscope here because what temp is my soldering iron at? Six fifty. This is upside down. The glue for this is sticking to my fingers. Jesus Christ. Here we go. Eight, seven... Stop sticking to my fingers. The other schematic. Are you saying there's another schematic here? Oh, sure. I see. Yeah, but that's even older. Those instructions are even older. OK. 
Okay, hold on. Okay, so here's our 914 diode right there. I think Josh threw away some parts intentionally just so this uh, story would have some conflict. <laughs> I I opened the can live. <laughs> it's, it's movie magic. That's it, yeah. The special effect. <laughs> Seems like I'm missing another diode even. What's going on here? Well, that's no good. I think I'm missing a diode. Sounds like they might have left out a bag. Well, that's really frustrating. Now we've got another problem. We're missing a diode. It sounds like you're missing a parts bag. I, I'm going to go with Don on that. No, I don't think we are. I, I don't think we are. I think we have everything we need, but we may not have the diode, but um, maybe I'm just looking at this the wrong way. Yeah, I don't think the schematic that's in the instructions that you have is accurate to the board you've got. So nobody in particular. I was pretty cautious. I didn't didn't see anything drop. I got them in that parts tray pretty quickly. What a waste. Huh. Well. Um, okay, hold on. Let's get this let's get this one guy going where he belongs at least. Just put everything you've got somewhere and let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. So we got to figure it. We got to diagnose this guy first. I don't know what diode this is. That looks like an eight and a seven. That's not even. There's something I think when you turn it that says 47 too. But they they're they're like upside down of each other. See that looks like 48 almost. No, now it looks like 87. And that looks like 67? Yeah. The pants. See that that looks like an upside down 47. If you put something solid behind that dial, would it focus better on it? So that's the 4148. 4148. Yep, I see it. So it's not okay. 87, it's 48. Yep. Okay. Advance. Well, that at least has a place on the board, right? Uh, Yeah, once I find it. Where does that guy go? Where does that guy go? Here's the 914s right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. You're not seeing it. That's the 914 right there, which is the one I can't find. Oh, yeah. You're talking about on the board, yeah. And it goes right there, yeah. That's the 914, though. Mm -hmm. I've got the 4148 in my hand.
And the 4148 goes where? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to find. <laughs> Great. I Do you good. have to build that output filter board setup? Uh, yeah, but that's pretty quick. That's that's nothing. That's not that big a deal. That's the low pass well, filter. It didn't go on there. Right? There is no other bag. <laughs> like, look at the other <laughs> bag. It's a tuna can. There's no other bag. <laughs> I opened all the bags. There is only one bag. The instructions say there's like five bags, but there are not five bags. <laughs> Do you think they forgot to send you the extra can? Oh, is there another can? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dog, you got to open the other can. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, you yeah. You got to knock off. You got to counterfeit. It's S rigged. SC Flowers, I think you, you got it. Uh, so the, the green parts is what we're installing right now. Um. The, the green parts are the ones that we're on right now, and there is no other diode on uh, the green parts other than the one that I have. Boy, this is uh, interesting. This is supposed to be the this is supposed to be an easier pixie install. And so far it is not. like I mean, it's not the pixie is not great. Don't get me wrong, but so does that mean that's the yeah, I mean, okay. I'm looking, I'm looking at the green parts right now, and it says the 914 or... You got that band set right Oh, you're right, you're right. It does say that. Too many things going on in my head. What about the... Somebody said something, something about the band. Does the band matter? Uh, it's a 40 meter. This is all 40. And it's got the two direction of the way the diode flows. Oh, the yeah, the band matters. Oh, it does matter. And I did it wrong. <laughs> You're totally right. It does. And I did it wrong. How did I do that? Oh my god. And now you applied I'm... power to it? No. Nah. We tried to stop you, Josh. Nobody said anything. Somebody did. Nobody I did, but there's like six other people going. I was screaming in silence. Here's where I didn't want to be. Desoldering. Good movie. Well, the thing is, you've shown people how to solder. Now you're showing them how to fix a mistake. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's the ticket. This was all planned. Who. What I'm trying to avoid is overheating this. Okay, got it. Got one leg. Do you not have any uh, desolder wick? I don't like wick. I mean, I, I, I have it. I just, I don't use it very often. Okay, part. Diodes generally don't like this being done to them, so we might have already fried it, but we'll see. And my holes are not clear, so take care of that real fast. So hold oh, Diodes sucker. don't like being removed? No, nah, they don't like being jerked around with. Can't really blame them. Try not to fry this pin header. Okay, there we go. So I cleaned the holes out. That's it. 
So now we can reinsert. Nicholas Hopkins, Discord isn't working. I'll try tomorrow. It's probably on your end, I'm thinking. It might be the push to talk stuff, messing with them. Was he in the chat? Did you see him? All right. Back in business. Well, we'll see. I don't know. Could totally be dead. How would you check a diode? A multimeter? Yeah. Yeah, you just put it in a diode checking mode. Do you want to check the diode before you put it back in, Josh? Who's got time for that? I don't have another diode. Six hours later? <laughs> well, six hours? I'm not going to be here for six hours. We're almost done, man. You're running pretty close with the uh, podcast uh, runtime there. Oh, yeah. Well, we're only two hours in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you should have scheduled this for a, uh, a podcast. Right. Everybody's gone. It's not like I'm... Uh, all the kids are gone. Everybody's gone. I'm here by myself. You guys are just uh, going through my insanity. That's all. We're just here to entertain you. So you're saying I, I'm doing a live stream to en to have you entertain me? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we not entertain? Or, or, or maybe I should say, you know, we're just hanging out with you. Do I need to go all Sparta on you? No, I'm not entertained. I need more tank radio. Doesn't sound like baby booms entertaining. Aren't you right the, in there? You're the you're the person that would be the solution to that. Where where's the uh, <laughs> tank? Where's the Jackbox games, Frank? Um, it's gonna come up in another couple of weeks. Got some stuff coming along, but we had fun playing some Jackbox game on uh, New Year's Eve, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did. I missed it. Oh, it was a blast. We did yeah. Jackbox games, starting out with some murder um, house trivia. We went to Kyle's stream, and I loved how his wrapped up with um, the YouTubers trivia, with um, the open room, and there were, he was doing the poll that everyone had. Uh, it was a question, and you had four choices, and you picked the which YouTuber best represented that category. Yeah, that was fun. That was cool. Uh, Nicholas Hopkins, I understand, man. I, I appreciate it. Maybe just mess with your settings a little bit. Okay, now we're playing the resistor game before I break out the uh, multimeter, which I have here. What are we looking for? Brown, black, red. Nope. That's brown, black, orange. That's not it. I don't understand why there are four power pole, holes for the power cable. Uh, they're for centering it. When you have the RCA yeah. jack, they have two connectors on the side. To hold it down, like for support. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we're going to have to start testing you, Chase. We're out of the black. All right. What is this? This is a 1K. All right. Was the RCA jack also in the missing bag? No, there's tons of RCA jacks, but I don't have a power lead for an RCA jack. 
I just found a date on this schematic. The date on the schematic is 30th of May, 2011. I know. It's so <laughs> bad. Wait, get out of there. That's a pretty nice multimeter you got there. Why aren't you working for me now, though? Yeah, do you guys notice that the instructions are from 2012? Well, I mean, that's probably true because this is not, I mean, they don't even match what Josh is trying to build. You guys got me freaked out. Now I'm looking down the RCAs for missing capacitors and parts. Ah! Yeah, and the documentation at the end even says, oh, here's what you can do with the leftover parts. Yeah, right. That's not it, right? Brown, black. That's not red. Everybody agree that's not red, right? <laughs> that's orange. Oh, you can't see it. Ugh, that's not going to work for the camera. Yeah, it looks orange. Uh, Shane, this is just YouTube and Discord right now. Yeah, my Google Foo is usually pretty on point, but I cannot find version 4 instructions anywhere. Well, okay, so then the instructions are also wrong for the resistors, for the printed resistors. So, okay, now I've I'm literally got to go, you know, resistor by resistor. So I'll let you guys double-check my work here. So here's my, here's my multimeter. We're looking for a 1K resistor. That's it, right? Oh, no, that's just one. Never mind. Yeah, I scoured the internet and I scoured their webpage, and I only found two versions of this. These instructions, um, the ones you're using, and the ones I sent you. How accurate has the uh, silk screen been um, compared to the instructions you're using? Uh, the silk screen has been good, actually. But it's different than the directions. This is the this is the one. Okay, here you go. Boop boop boop. Are you not twitching? I'm not twitching. No, he's on YouTube. They also have a groups.io. I've been looking through that, and I haven't found anything. This is not red. This is orange. And it's showing 1K. That's like your tuna has expired. My tuna is expired. That was madcap. Looks like 1K. That was, right? Oop. Come on, buddy. This guy. Okay, so then now I'm going to now we're going to mic we're going to microscope cuz I want you guys to see this. Is that orange or red? That's orange. That's orange. pretty orange to me. Yeah. Yet, when we uh, do the old uh, testy poo. I just dropped it. <laughs> First drop part. <laughs> now, is it? And then that's 1K, not 10K. So you're good to go. I found you. Yeah, that's 1K. <laughs> orange yet yet here is your hey look at that oh no you're not on the right one how long ago did you order this thing oh somebody gave it to me i wonder why <laughs> depending how sensitive your meter oh. is it's also reading the the uh, resistance of your hands and the resistor sure 
but I think I'm in the wheelhouse. So do you think this was sitting on their shelf since before or after 2012? Uh, I, I bet we have a good 2012 vintage here. Uh, it says 114. Check the date code on the IC. This uh, was supposed to be. This heralds itself as being a, a rather simple kit to build, which it's it's so far not difficult to build. But the the problem is that um, your some of this stuff is like not expected. Like a pixie is just real straightforward. The the very the variability that you have with these with these writ connectors is good. I think it's all good, but you wouldn't call this like the kit to necessarily start out with if you're if it's a first timer oh wait no did i just screw that up no idea oh crap that was 10k i screwed it up i'm losing my mind It was 10K, it wasn't one. No, it's 10K. I, I wasn't looking at the uh, I wasn't looking at the precision. That was my bad. Oh, so a 10K was supposed to go there? Uh no, one K. I think he's saying you grabbed the wrong one. Yeah. And the yeah, the orange was correct then. Oh, your meter wasn't set to the right precision. Uh yeah. No, it it was fine. The meter was doing its job. I just wasn't paying attention enough to it. That was my bad. If you want that to work, you'll have to reapply some heat, some solder to that to melt the rest of it. Evening, Mike. Evening, Tom. If you just get that going, and then you can once you've got a, some the solder melted, just then pull it out. Oh, <laughs> I did the whole thing with me. Go. Oh. 
Well, since this kit clearly had very, very good detailed instructions, um, are there any other ones besides that cricket that you'd recommend um, for like beginners and stuff like that? The cricket one's real good. I like building the crickets, uh, particularly for beginners. Okay, come on now. What is that? Crickets for states QRP? Yep. A lot of their kits are really nice. And she's out. Okay, let's clear the holes now. Are there any good little kits like this that'll do uh, digital? That'll just take the digital audio signal and kick it out? Uh, yeah, actually, the QRP guys, which I showed right in the beginning of the um, uh, show, they've, they've got a couple of digital um, kits that you can use. They're, they're actually pretty good, too. All right, we got to track down this uh, yeah. 1K resistor. They're, they're just really hard to get a hold of right now because yeah, they, 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 they make them available and they sell out within hours. I think uh, TO's been trying to get one through two sets of runs. I've got the and double sideband uh, one that I've got to build. Oh, maybe. Okay. He's looking at the one that does FT8. Yeah. It's a yeah. The QRP Labs QDX. Yeah. Well, now we're playing the, uh, where's the, uh, resistor? That's it. What? Okay, hold on. Hey, while you're playing with that, can I throw out a question I was going to save for the after chat? Yeah, go for it. All right, so you're familiar with uh, MMANA, I think it is, antenna modeling? A uh, bit. I've only used it a little bit. Okay, so I made a basic dipole, center-fed dipole, for, I want to say, 20 or 40 meters on there. Mm -hmm. Kept it super basic, tuned it up, and it was saying that I was going to get like 8.95 dB or something like that. Does that seem right? For what? What kind of antenna? Just a basic dipole. I put it 10 meters off the ground. No. For what frequency? Uh, I want to say I did 40 meters and I tuned it to 7.15. Put it 10 meters off the ground. No, that's not high enough. Well, yeah, but that's all I'm going to be able to do. Well, no, so... I know that, but I mean, you would it would be an invis engine at that point. So you it, wouldn't get a lot of gain. It doesn't matter. Just, just go with just well here's here's the thing what why it's a dipole so why are you doing uh mmma why don't you just go with it what's the uh what's the oh i was just playing around with stuff oh, okay i i just looked at that number and went that doesn't seem like that should be right it was like it seemed like i should be capping out at maybe six at best on a dipole mm -hmm. almost nine seemed like it was too high yep but what do i know that's way too high yeah, you got parameter awry somewhere Yep. Yeah. Okay, we don't have a 1K resistor. Oops. 
it's it's possible too that you got your grounding wrong but we do not have a 1k resistor in this kit yeah but i've got a 40 meter dipole up right now at 25 feet off the ground and it it does okay yeah this is uh what the what the heck 1.5 1. 1.6 1. 10 10 33k yeah we've gone through all these i'm going to go grab my uh my resistors now that I do have. Yeah, this is, uh, wow. Okay. Hey, uh, since we're doing the Discord thing, I might as well ask a question. Yeah, go for it. So I bought this here uh, ICOM 7300 back in November, and uh, I love it. It's great. It's awesome. Okay. But uh, HRO has the FTDX10 from Yesu on sale right now. It's uh, $300 off. And I really, really, really like the fact that you can just, it has a DBI output and you can just connect to a monitor. And I think that's pretty cool. Okay. And, you know, if I were to try and get my 7300 connected, I think there's about, there's a couple different ways. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that uh, WF view software, if anybody's used that. Um, I'd like I, to hear from them. I use Win for ICOM. That's what I currently use. Yeah, I think that's like sixty dollars, and the win the WVU thing I think is free. Yeah, WFU is that it's open source, so uh, it's yeah. like some, some dude, some like scout master uh, guy wanted a scout trip to like see the waterfall or whatever. That's yeah, kind of how it started. Kevin Laughlin has a video on the WFU. So you might want to look at it. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was watching that when Josh was having uh, troubles earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, I, I... Well, here's... Okay, so here's the thing. Are you are you just getting the, the Yesu just to get video output? Is that it? Uh, well, so what, what, what does that uh, radio analog thing do then? Why would I need that? In order to, because it, it seems like that was kind of the way to go for a long time to connect an ICOM to like your computer, essentially. Um, so I, I'm I'm not following what you're saying. Yeah, so there's like this. Um, what is it called? It's like um, the PTRX seventy three hundred pan adapter for ICOM seventy three hundred. It's made by Radio oh, Analog. Oh, well, that's that's for running um that that's for getting an output into like SDR software on a computer. You're talking about just outputting a screen, right? I guess here, let me let me go back a step. So yes, the Yesu will output directly to a, a monitor, right? And so will the seventy six ten and some other radios. But is that the only reason you're thinking about upgrading? Well, I mean, it'd be cool to control it from my computer as well. Like at the like, screen doesn't you know. do that though. You no. still have to run software to do cat control, and the seventy three hundred already does that. You see what we're saying? So the that Win for ICOM or the one that you were looking at, th those are cat mm -hmm. control software. If you just want to output the video of the the radio, that's a different thing. Well, but couldn't I just like have like my uh, my mouse and just like I've got a um, what the heck is this like the Master X whatever mouse? You can just quickly switch to a different device. So I could just have that connected to the radio. The MX Master from Logitech? 
There you go. Does the does the Yesu support Bluetooth mouse? Uh, I don't know. It's got a USB port. I have no idea. It it, it, it can take a, a a keyboard mouse, but I'm not sure about whether it has Bluetooth drivers. Or I don't think it does. Mouse. Yeah, I don't think so either. But you, you guys talking about the uh, DX10, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that requires a USB dongle. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, it, it Bluetooths through USB. So you just got to use one of the USB ports. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, if it takes a dongle and it has the drivers internally to run a dongle, then yeah, it would do Bluetooth. But but here what I'm saying the 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 where we started was I want to have a monitor for the radio. The the monitor function doesn't give you um, radio control. Gotcha. Uh, kind of because no. you can display because you can display the because the radio will take a keyboard mouse and use the keyboard no, that's mouse not what on, I'm saying. That's on the little screen saying. and then when it projects onto the monitor that that mouse pointer will follow it onto the monitor but, but that that that's not what I'm saying I said the monitor doesn't give you the control of the radio no you have to add the other components Co as well right but then they are there and they don't exist on the uh, 7300 okay so here's here's my following question H how many people yeah. are actually going to just connect a monitor a mouse and a keyboard to their radio and not have a computer with its own monitor and mouse right next to it. How many people are actually going to uh, do that? Ham, Re Ham Radio Dude did it. I don't know if he's still no. <laughs> set up. No, well, I, hey. No, I mean, who's going to do that for their Shack solution? No, I, I like what you're saying right now. This is uh, this is helping me uh, to decide and make my mind up because um, I wasn't really sure. I guess I'm not really 100% sure of what all the uh, FTDX10 capabilities are. I know I did those two things. Um, I haven't really had too much hands on it. I played around with it a little bit at the HRO, but that's about it. Yeah, it's a hybrid SDR with a much better receiver than the 7300. But For all intents and purposes, it's basically an IC7300 with an exceptional receiver filter set. Yep. And no, the menus are not deep like they are in a normal Yaesu. But they're, it's not the best interface. I, I, well, I don't prefer yeah. it. If you like it, that's I, fine. I actually do. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you're trying to just visualize the waterfall on your computer and also control it with a mouse and keyboard with your computer, you can do that with software that already exists on the 7300. You don't necessarily need the video out capability. Gotcha. So realistically, instead of like whatever turning my 70 because i could get like five percent I, I could take a five percent hit and basically trade in my 7300 and then buy the ftdx 10 from hro but instead of doing that it'd probably make more sense to buy that uh pan adapter thing from radio analog and then run an sdr and then i'd be able to control the radio and uh have a waterfall on my screen and that would make more sense probably maybe for the money Say that again. Like, what's what's your end goal, though? Yeah. Like, I, I see what you're trying to trying to do here. I mean, like, if you if you want the FTDX10 and you want that display, uh, controlled from your computer, I, I, you could very easily get one of those twenty dollar HDMI to USB dongles, uh, uh, a graphical input card, basically, mm -hmm. and then go. DVI to HDMI into your computer so you can see the screen that you look at on the radio. But it, it, I mean, if you're wanting, like, you, you are you just wanting to look at the waterfall while you're doing the cat control or what? I mean, it, it would really help to have a bigger screen. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't. I don't have the best eyes, and the icon is. It's it's a it's a clear screen. It's good. Um, but I would like it to be bigger. Um, mm -hmm. I run a mag loop antenna, so it's kind of like, it kind of helps me out a lot to see like where my peak is and all that. Um, and it's so, just helpful. I, I use, and it, and it would also be nice to, <laughs> it would also be nice to be able to control it from the computer too, to be honest. I use the ICOM, um, 7300 with, uh, the, what's that? The RPBS one, their, their software R suite. Yeah. RSBA one. Yeah, there that's, we go. I'm dyslexic. That's, like, that's like a hundred dollars, though, right? So, do you already have a seventy-three hundred? Yeah, he does. Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
I mean, yeah, um, it, really the FTDX 10 is there for the fine tuning of the audio receive. That's really all it's at the end of the day. That's really all it's going to give you. Okay. So there's a couple, yeah. there's a bit of misinformation. Scott in the, uh, um, in the chat, RSBA1 won't do digital modes. There's two pieces of software that comes with the RSBA1, and one is the remote software, and that will absolutely do digital modes. If you're talking about the control interface, that does not, but also you're not really um, looking at the screen for doing digital modes outside of just checking your SWR. If your goal is to visualize the waterfall on a computer and also give it control, or control it from the computer. There are a number of software titles that already exist for the 7300 that do that. But if you if you want the same capability on the Yesu, well, you know, you can get that, and you can get that same capability, but the monitor output may not be what you think it is. I guess is where I'm going with that. Cuz it what's it it's um is it 720p or 1080p? What? The, the, the FTDX output. 10 yeah. output. It's no, it's not even that high. It's I think 400 by 800. It's it's actually it's it's the same resolution as the actual screen in the radio. So it it really is kind of weird the way they do that. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're understanding me 100%, Josh. So I, I I'm totally on board with what you're saying. Um, and I would also just like to say that when I was going to buy the 7300, I took it, like, I played around with that FTDX 10 for a while, but it wasn't on sale, so I did not buy it. But now it's like 300 bucks off. So, so what's the final? That's the, that's the only reason why I was thinking about it. And, what's, the, um, what's the total price right now for? Um... Um, it, I think it's like 1400 yeah. I mean, it's fourteen hundred. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. It, it's a good radio, you know. Um, if it if it does the things that you want it to, great. But I guess my curiosity is if if it's just the cat control features, then, you know, I, I'm I'm not seeing the uh the, the now what four hundred and fifty maybe five hundred dollars extra you're gonna have to pay because you're gonna pay a restocking fee or whatever, you know. But uh, I don't know. I, I guess because you've already got the seventy three hundred in hand, I would be more obliged to say try out what's available on the 7300. There are free software titles, right, that we've already talked about. And if the free software doesn't do it for you, then, okay, swap it for the Yesu. I think, uh, I think I'm think i probably going to do that. <laughs> I just figured I'd bring it up. I don't know, because uh, I, I was really, really looking into it. And when I was at HRO, I, I almost bought that Yesu, but... Um, it was just, you know, it was almost like twice the price as the 7300, and it, it wasn't really much different, you know. Mm -hmm. there, there aren't that many more features, so. Well, it, it is, yeah. I mean, what, it's a five-year newer radio, right? So there are going to be some some enhancements there. Um, you know, the, I, I, I'm like I said, I'm not, I'm not faulting you for thinking about going that way, right? And also, that was one of the things on my mind is like, you know, um, this radio is kind of getting the 7300 is kind of getting long in the tooth you know it's still it's still there it's still doing doing great um but yeah that was that was one of my thoughts but um honestly then the other thought the, the counter thought to that is like there's a whole lot of support for the 7300 and there's a whole lot of other you know a bunch of a plethora of software out there that other people have already created that is supported for the 7300 so i don't know Um, yeah, I hear you. So the two video display modes on the FTDX10 is 800 by 480 and 800 by 600. Yeah, that's Ugh. what I was getting at. But it's it's funny that if you scroll through the uh, the user manual for the FTDX10, it says do not put this device near video tapes. Like if that's still relevant in this day and age. Oh man, I made some some big oopsies. I'm not liking this uh this kit guys. Yeah, I mean I gotta back read, out a lot of work that I just did here. Not if good. you look at their groups.io, it it almost looks like people have you know stopped really 
doing much with those kits anymore. They've like abandoned them. <laughs> yeah, because like last year there was like three uh, of 12 months. There's only three months where there's actually discussions going on. Mm -hmm. And they're not about the, the little squall. Um, there were some discussions on the little squall like years ago. And even then the guy saying, oh, yeah, the schematic's wrong. I need to get, uh, you know, whatever his call sign to send me those so I can make some corrections on them and stuff like that. But then it, it just trails off. Yeah, no, I screwed. I screwed this one up pretty bad. That I'm might have something this. to do with missing parts and uh, bad, uh, bad tech docs. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, he wanted to update the docs for sure. He said there was a number of things on them. And uh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, I think you're already doing it. Uh, those two yellow capacitors appear to have been, appear to have been letolytics, not. That's right. Yeah. You you got it. <laughs> you caught. Although me. someone did, I'm not claiming this one. Someone did mention it in the text a bit earlier on. Yeah. No. I. I. My bad. So this. Mike, did right you out. get a new mic? No, I, I've turned it up a bit. <laughs> Well, well, technically, I've got a new computer, so. What, are you running that new 486 with the turbo mode? Oh, yeah. Man, that one's knackered. Well, boyos, I think I ruined this one. Oops. Didn't even get a chance to let the smoke out. Yeah, maybe not. Eh, oh, I thought you were putting tantalums in. Yeah, I, I screwed up. They should have been the uh, the electrolytics. Well, I still hold to the fact that when you guys make those videos or make videos and you screw up, I think we learn more from that than when you get it right. <laughs> well, do you mean almost every tank radio video? Well, I mean the first one I ever encountered that on was when Jason was building the uh, uh, building that. Uh, uh, CW thing, uh, more Sereno, and he messed it up, right? And then he had to go in and fix it and, and all of that. Well, then, damned if I didn't have the same damn problem. So I knew exactly how to fix it. So, yeah, I've been for that ever since. But, yeah, Frank, you, you still need to, to finish your, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, All-Star Node? All-Star Node, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I really messed up the soldering. Uh, unlike Josh's soldering skills that is really only on show today, uh, mine are atrocious. Well, but Frank, I think when you got mm -hmm. down last time, it was be you ran into the same problem that I did. Um, where the, the radio, or you, you're, you weren't getting any serial output. I mean, the... <laughs> the thing was booting up and coming up, but it wasn't getting a serial. And I had to go to the guy and and send it back to him, and he had to fix it by adding a resistor that's not normally on the board. Hey, Don, hold on. Hey, Scott, the FTDX has a – I think it's a DVI output, not an H, uh, HDMI. Yeah, right. DVI like so, old-school yeah. computer monitor, like yeah. CRT old monitor. School. Yeah, it did. It doesn't have Did a you check HDMI. your polarity on those electrolytics? I did. I did. Thank you. But one thing the FTDX 10 does have that you don't normally find it, uh, on a 7300 is you can add a LAN port to it so it can plug into your network. Mm -hmm. Now, is that inexpensive? No. <laughs> I'm getting the sense that you are a uh, more of a Yesu guy there, uh, Don. No, he's more of a no. flex guy. Well, Don's pretty equal opportunity, I think. Yeah, Don. I've got 7,100. Yeah. I've got a 7,200. And a 705, to... right? Right, and a 705. But the 7,300. And a KX3. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and a the... flex 6,600. And a G90. I, I listed them all out for somebody the other day. It was ridiculous. But... Um, and uh, uh, I've got a Kenwood 480 SAT also. Uh, Don but, has all the radios, okay? Well, Don has the, all the radios. And, and the only radio that I ever had problems with, ever, was the 7300 because of the receiver overload. None of the other radios I've got 
the old ones, the new ones, every, you know, the flex, whatever you want to put on here, connected to the same antenna in the same conditions, none of the rest of them have ever had front end load for load, only the 7300. So that's why I'm not, that's why I'll, you'll find me pushing you to something else. But there's plenty of people that enjoy them. And if you're not in my environment, they probably work great. So, you know, I, I really shouldn't talk. But um, I have actually talked to a couple other people that have had the same problem I've had. Well, I so, have I had the problem when I had power alone. line noise. No, no question. Yeah, but that was not what I was getting. I was actually getting overload from a... Um, a distant uh, shortwave shortwave station because um, I could see it on the flex, but it never f affected the flex and it never affected the FDX 10 or any of the others. But every time that thing would bleed over, I mean, it would almost cover the whole 70 or uh, seven megahertz. Mm -hmm. And whenever it did, the, the uh, 7,300 would overload and in like, it would desense, which was a pain in the ass on FT8. But <laughs> did you ever try to go hunt that noise out? Well, I know exactly where it was coming from. It was coming from a station, a, a, a Christian radio station at seven point three one three. So why I was hearing it at seven oh seven four, I don't know. But I could see it, and I, you know, even to this day, I can see it on the flex. I can see when they're when they're playing the music, it will beat. In time with the music, under seven or seven oh seven four, even down uh, just inside of the CW portion, you can see the 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 stuff in the waterfall. It's What's just, that WRMI? It, it's out of it's out of uh, North Carolina, so I don't remember the station exactly. Uh, and it may be, it's 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 either three one three or three fifteen. I forgot, but it's right around there. And yeah, w, a, Dar, WRMI is out of Florida. They're a fifty kilowatt station. Yeah, the one that I the one that I understood from somebody was that it was a hundred kilowatt. But if they're running oh, that wait, much no, power. They need to protect their uh, five hundred kilowatts. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the reason why it's bleeding over. Yeah, but I mean, I'm I'm in Texas. I'm not in uh, in South Carolina or North Carolina, wherever that was. It was one Believe of the it or, Believe it or not, I've operated on uh, 40 meters, like four miles from WRMI and not had a problem. Yeah. See, well, so. the, the thing about it is, as we know from radio, right, the closer you are, the less likely you are to have problems with them, unless you're like right on top of them. Because that's why, like, when Mike and, and Frank and uh, Jason and all these other guys go out and work, work POTA. I can never work them because I can't hear them. They go right over no, the top. Too of me. Yeah, I'm too close. So, I, I've been now, trying to get better uh, starting out on 40, but usually mm -hmm. when I start on 40, man, it, no one really gets that notification. I give up after 10 minutes and then I go over to 20, but then that's the time. You know, everyone's kind of getting on there. You're, the ham alerts are starting to go yeah. off. They, they're seeing it well, in the POTA app. Mike's in Houston and when, you know, I mean, or in Huntsville and he, he comes up on 40 every once in a while and I still can't hear him. He's too, Interesting. he's too close. And I think one time when, uh, side boom was down in Corpus Christi, I was able to pick him up, but just barely. And I don't remember if that was on 20 or 40, but that's how far, almost how far you have to be away. And like, for instance, again, you know, Johnny, uh, whiskey, five kilo Victor, he's just down in Austin. And whenever he's on the air, I can't hear him. Is he still get on the air? Yeah. He just, I don't know. N nobody knows why he dropped his YouTube channel, but yeah, I, I see him on, um, ham alert every once in a while. All right, what's the next one? C5. I'm going to lay all these down and solder them all up because it's a small little board. Uh, let's see. 681 to C3. 
Hey, Josh, I got a question for you that you can relate to. Yeah, man, go for it. Uh, and it's just because I, I, I get confused and I just need some clarification on it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm an extra. The wife's a, a tech. If we were out uh, and about and I was setting up and doing a, uh, a, say, a poda or a soda or just doing something out portable and she wanted to get on the air and I was on the general or extra portions of the band, let's say, mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm there, She you know, it's my station. But how would she identify? Would she say her call sign? You know, working sign. with me, or what? What would she say? Your call sign. Yeah, it's always your call sign. If you're the control operator, it's your call okay. sign that goes out over the air. Well, I and, mean, I, I I'd heard somewhere say that she could use her call sign working, you know, working on, and then my call sign as long as mine was in the the thing. But I didn't know, you know, whether or not uh, that would work either. I wouldn't mess with it. I just use your call sign. Yeah, and the truth is, maybe she could do that, but it, what you under, have to understand is she would not get credit for anything. So, in other words, if you were doing a POTA log and you were going to file that with POTA, it would still go in under your call sign. So, it doesn't matter what whether she mentions her call sign in mm -hmm. passing. That's all it would be because it's not legally and everything else. She is operating as you with you sitting at the radio. Roger, got that. And that's what I kind of thought, but I just, like, I, you read one thing and then you hear the contrary. And so I was just curious of what you guys thought. Yeah, just keep it simple. She, she shouldn't, because what's going to happen is if she used her own call sign, even though, let, let's say she follows exactly all the nomenclature of using her call sign, then your call sign, then this, then that, da 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 da. da. There's still somebody out there that's going to get butt hurt over it. So you just, just make it easy. Yeah, there's always that guy. That's right. I believe I saw the same thing just a couple days ago, but I don't remember the source. It was like the tech call sign slant, the general or extra call sign. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think I would do that. When I've been out with a tech friend and we're doing POTA, um, he just uses my call sign. So, uh, you know, like, like Josh, keep it easy. Yeah, just keep it easy. Yes. Well, if you open the door for controversy, it'll jump right through. So, yeah, just keep it. Uh, don't even don't even go there. That's right. And man, Josh, you're flying now. I mean, uh, either you're getting tired and want to see the end, or uh, you're in your stride. No, I, I I'm doing all. I'm placing. I'm all. I'm just placing right now because the 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 way it's written, I'm kind of like cautious about everything I do now. But this one, this is really straightforward. It's just see all the all the thing is silk screen and it's C one capacitor one, right? That that's easy, right? Choke one is right or choke two is right there. Uh, this is the wow gray, silver, and red. Get out of here with that. Okay, I'm gonna show you the. That's unique having resistors as in... So check check this out. Check out our gray silver red choke. Boy, that looks like silver silver red. Really or, bad. Gray huh? red silver. There it is. No, it's the other direction. I see it. It's good. Got to be careful with these, man. It's kind of an interesting kit. There's no, uh, there's no toroids. There's no instructions either. Well, there's instructions, but <laughs> hey, just throw all the parts in the holes. That'll work. Okay, so we got we got all the parts there. So now we can just solder the crap out of it. So let's do that. I'm I'm anxious to see what we're left over with. I got to go back and and sort out these 104s, but um, I'm curious. I'm curious if we're gonna pick up those capacitors for. Hey, the Josh, time. go back to the screen. You're oh, on the thank microscope. You. Thank you, thank you. I'm I'm curious to see if we get, you know, a couple of extra parts there at the end that we can add to the um those jumpers and see if that's our uh our secret sauce. Can I say a comment on the station operator deal? Yep. 
more of a story, I guess. Um, when I was doing a parks on the air activation, I had some guy come back to me and he was actually mad. He was like, you're a technician. You're not supposed to be on blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, Oh, okay. Well, you must've miscopied my call. Verify you have, you know, kilo Juliet seven Oscar Papa Romeo, whatever. And <laughs> he comes back like 10 seconds later. He's like, Oh, okay. I missed copy your call sign. Yeah. It, and it's just like, you know, People just look why was that your first thought? You know, like, could it possibly uh, be that you missed? I mean, it, this is everyone it, else's it, fault, but my own. I mean, there's also the yeah. guys who, um, use QRZ as their source of truth. But yeah, like when you say there's always that guy, that it is kind of true. I mean, like, you know, I had that happen to me and I wasn't even, I was a general. I am a general. So it's like, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess some people think like they have to police it or something. Oh yeah. There's one guy I saw that got mad because some, some new tech or tech had gotten on to the general bands was identifying as AG, but QRZ didn't show him AG. And QRZ was, like, it's, if it's not QRZ, like, go look at a ULS, you dummy. Isn't the yeah, whole, QRZ the whole is like 24 that hours, show up yet? 24 hours out of date. Uh, no, you know, like, yeah, update. so, like, I've had people get mad for vanity calls. I've seen people get, um, like vanities where vanity hasn't updated because the 24 hour period from when it actually gets issued to your latest you know, Chris, AG. Chris, you'd know a lot about vanities, wouldn't you? So, so here's an interesting one, a little off topic for everybody to probably get a kick out of it. I'm on the QRZ swap meet forums right now, and there's a for sale thread that says ICOM FT2D. ICOM, yeah, someone uh, that's like the Dodge Mustang I saw on Craigslist. Though. A couple years nice. ago. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, no, it's a, it's an actual game. And like, you look at the pictures, it straight up says Yasu. Someone obviously had a. Yeah, it's a brain fart. Um, or there was a, actually, I think it was a. It was either yesterday or today that Callum dropped a video where he was uh, uh, online or he was on the air and somebody identified and he looked up the uh, call sign and it said it belonged to a Kate, but he kept saying he was Dave. And he's going, it still says Kate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he just gave up and said, look, I'm putting you in the log, but I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, we've had with the Wii 4 DX, we get called. So uh, we did a kilo in a weekend with uh, Kate MRD came out and a couple, and a bunch of us, Matt, came out to uh, Washington and stuff. So I'm running Mike's radio. So you call CQ. I'm running CQ recording. It's Kate MRD talking. I'm coming back to you mm -hmm. with the five nine or whatever as we four DX, and then I'm getting people calling me Craig. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. All the same contacts because Craig is our trustee. Oh, Mike is our yeah, CQ. Yeah. My CQ oh, voice because he's his radio. And hey, Chris, at, at least you weren't out doing a pod and everyone was going. Thanks, Matt. Not Matt, but I'll take the thanks. <laughs> 17 parks in 20 days will do that yeah when, when yeah, I've got to take Wii 4 DX out of my phone because the thing lights up like a Christmas tree mm -hmm. Every... <laughs> okay. yeah when it when it lights up too I can yeah. never hear you guys and I'm talking about I was out really? of the park yeah I was out of the park too so, but I, I think that was when Sideboom was doing where, it and where were you uh december 10th 11th 12th we worked them we worked on okay i'm like because we yeah, had everything pipeline so. straight to dawn uh to texas at least yeah i think I yeah really... we worked on yeah no i'm talking about like i think it's side boom that's been using the call yeah it's, I, oh, side it's boom's down and, in, uh, and i can't i can't hear him and then it's, it's or side boom or brad yeah and brad somebody somebody says slash la that's and Brad. I, and I can't well, hear him either. You know, so side boom, you know you don't have to identify slash LA on air just on the POTUS spots. Yeah. The yeah, world, yeah. World, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but but you, but you, you know why you can't hear side boom? Because it's worldwide, yeah? Yeah, too close. <laughs> you need to get more pills in that lean. Your... What, what's really funny, what's really funny is when Jess runs We4DX, 
mm-hmm. it really confuses people because they look up the call and they, they want to be, they're like, you don't sound like a Craig. Well, you know, what's funny is when I looked you guys up the last time, uh, when I put you in the logs, it, it doesn't show up as Craig anymore. It just says club call, uh, identifies as a club call on um, Amherst. I think, I, I, yeah, I think uh, I think I don't know if we changed the cures that I have to go look, but maybe they finally changed it. Let's look because well, it's it not even with him look up. So yeah, it's Craig C. Craig Baker. If you look at it, but it also has below it Hammer You Adventures. But I think they use depending on what ham spotting. I think you use them hammers. It depends too because. While I'm tonight, remind me tonight, Matt, to send the QSL cards to get printed. Oh, okay. Hey, send the QSL cards to get printed. Thank you. Hey, Chris, send the QSL cards to get printed. <laughs> Everybody, make sure to to, to text that's just yeah, watching. Yeah. Make sure to text Chris to, to remind him. Yeah. He's uh, he's good for direct messages on uh, the yeah, good, be Radio Craig Crash Chris. Course. Good. Everybody, Honestly. at him. Let's just let, uh, hey Josh, can we get a channel directly for uh, uh, this messaging? Is almost, this is almost yes. as bad as like when I had a, a, a production down ticket come in at work, and it was one of my annoying customers, and I just have everybody in the whole office just starts pinging me at once, and just Kater Medis still in the YouTube chat. And, well, I hear Slack. I have one of our receptionists. She goes. I don't know if this is a bad thing or not, but there's this production down issue for this customer. Is that red, black, red, black, brown, oh gold? Is this? I'm looking for brown, black, brown. That all looks brown, like. Black, that's like a brown slash red. Brown, black, black, gold. Ay yeah yeah. Is that brown, black, brown? That looks like brown, no, black, good. black to me. Yeah. It's a... I'd assume they use the same brown across both. I wonder how close Craig is, to, or Patrick is, to uh, Sean. That's Violet. Patrick's in Indianapolis. And Sean is where? Chicago area. Oh, okay. Red, purple, red. Whiskey not nine, fox, white. fox, fox, versus whiskey nine, golf, golf, golf. K at MRD equals Craig. That's right. Don't you forget it. Is it turning browner? Mm-hmm. All gray. Yeah. There we go. Brown, yeah. black, black. That's Ooh. gold. So looking from oh, the yeah. left, brown, 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 black, brown. Is that brown, <laughs> black, brown, or brown, brown, black, black? Because it should be a choke. It's black, black. Yeah. Is there a unless, resistor? Unless they're doing like a different no. value of brown for the brown. Then where yeah, is... my son is laughing at you because he's colorblind and they all look brown to him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Poor guy. So I'm looking for a choke. It's a 100 uh, microfarad uh, brown, black, brown. If only, don't you have an LCR meter? I do. You might have to whip out the LCR. You know, you can that make one it you have brown. On the screen right now kind of looks brownish more than it does black, the center stripe. Yeah. If, yeah. if you need a browner, just hold it up next to a flame. Chokes tend to also be more football shaped than they don't that they don't do that dip that's, in the middle. That's right. That's kind of why I'm thinking it's this other one, but hey, I'm all out of chokes at this point. <laughs> oh, I <don't> know. <laughs> I'm all out of jokes. I cannot stop you. Can I even interface with this thing? What's going on here? So, are you are you gonna end up going to Mouser and ordering the the parts you don't have? No, well, I've I've got the cap somewhere. I've just got to find them. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Come on now, you know we use rfparts.com. Yeah. Henry, was a Henry in it? I don't even know how to take Mike or uh, yeah, take Mike anymore. Like a talking to a whole new guy. Remember, it's default Craig. (laughs) 
switch mics. Am I coming in too hot? Nope. You're good. <laughs> okay. You know, <coughs> nope, wrong one. I just I just thought of something quite comical. I don't know, is that guy still in here that was wanting a bigger video output for his radio? Hi. You, you, I was just sitting here laughing to myself, thinking that you could, you know, always get you a IC7000 and output it to a 32-inch monitor. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a put a picture of it in the live stream. Yeah, it's a pity they didn't carry on with that feature. I know. Yeah. And it's weird to me that they had that beautiful radio, and then the next version of it is all black and white. Like, what happened? <laughs> well, I can understand why they switched it up. Because apparently the video uh, that outputs on the IC7000 is basically a small LCD screen. So it's just mm. raw video into that, which is why it's so easy to uh, output to an RCA to a bigger screen. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about the fact that that was such a nice color screen. And then, uh, I mean, on the radio. And then you know the 7100 then they they go to that little that black and white display uh i guess it's touch screen but i i don't know that i i like the 7000 a lot i don't really like the way it looks i think they wanted to make the 7100 more of a mobile and i think the color one had issues with heat and the uh the monochrome didn't have the same you know you heat go. issues like, yeah, it it does supposedly have issues with heat, but it's easy to solve with a fan on it. But uh, and and I th I've not yeah, actually had any issues with it. Uh, okay, so real quick, this uh, one hundred micro Henry choke. I'm I'm all out of I'm all out of chokes here, and brown black brown, and this is as close as I get. Ten is it ten? Ten K. No, 100 micro Henry is what we're looking for. That's a 10. You see that? Just... And you said you need brown, black, brown? Yeah. Just... Ay, ay, ay. This kit, man. Yeah. That that's got to be it. The guy the guy that was building those things or putting those things together started getting sloppy. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I, I could never. I could never do this. I could never build kits like this and like put kit. Well, put kits together, right? Like bag them all mm -hmm. up and all that stuff. There's no way I have the. I I don't have the attention for it. I'd be, well, nice I'd be is, bouncing is, off the walls. Nice thing is, is a lot of the places I know, like QRP, not QRP, um, QRP kits. Mm -hmm. QRP guys usually just text the email and be like, hey, I'm missing X part, and they just ship it out for free because it's like such a small cost to them. Yeah, but uh, QRP kits has been around since when? Because this guy Forever. seems like... There, there is literally no brown, black anything in uh, on uh, any of the parts. There's nothing. Pacific, Pacific antenna. You didn't put it in the filter board, did you? No, that's... No, nothing even close. Mm. This thing's driving me nuts. And it was on this live stream of 2022. <laughs> Josh yeah. lost it. Josh went insane. Josh goes postal and blows his desk up. <laughs> what Man. The... He put the fire to the wire and burnt that right. little squall all over his desk. Yeah, yeah so... Actually... No, go ahead, Don. I was going to say, do you have the, the 33K and any of those other parts? I, I don't have that many more parts left. I've got, it's all here. Like, I've, I've got, you know, here, look. So if, well, I still have. That says final on it. After this, you are going to get so much hate from QRP me. 
Do they well, it, give a lot of hate? It, you know, maybe it'll get their group IO form going again, you know? <laughs> I, no, no offense. I mean, I screwed up. You know, I screwed up all over the place. Um, I made like four bad solders, so my bad. But I'm, I, I don't know, guys. The the Comic Sans uh, write up and the uh, and the parts description is, don't know. News article reads: a Bright flash seen over Southern California last night was the result of a radio operator putting together a kit. He said he followed the instructions, but still, the ball of fire and go. <laughs> No, you have me right until you laughed. To whom it may concern, stop. <laughs> I have written you on this kit. Stop. Uh, so for everybody that's following along, no, I've got the 33K resistor. I've got everything. And this is the last okay. step, by the way. I'm on the last step, the last uh, bag five of five. I only had one bag, but okay. Uh, I'm on the 100 micro Henry choke. I don't know where it is. Hmm. I'll even I'll even do the thing. I'll look down here. And how can this be the last step? There are still a lot of empty holes there. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> Multi. Uh... You, you sure it's not the ten Henry one that identifies as a one hundred? Oh well, what? Wait, what do you mean? You know, it thinks it's a one hundred, but it's really a ten. It's self-identifying. It, it was born in the wrong color scheme. <laughs> I mean, that's that's it right there. Is you, you, you're not using its proper pronoun. That's it. That's the ten Henry. Is there even another? There is. Is there is? Okay, wait, wait. So here, here's okay. Let Let's go back a step. This is all silk screened, right? This board's all silk screened. Yes. This says, one hundred hen micro Henry. There is yes. no other choke, and I'm sitting on another choke. I've got this ten hen. There is no ten. There is no ten micro Henry used. Is there? Did I screw up? Maybe there's somebody in the chat who knows a lot more about electronics and can tell you whether that number sounds right for the project you're working on. I know orders of magnitude and Henry are a big deal. Yeah. All you got to do is watch M0 MSN build a mag loop. I'm going back to the parts list. So a 10 isn't even mentioned in the RF chokes. Mm. It's only 100 Spend that's it. mentioned. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you did uh, you did finally use those 102s, right? Uh, uh, yes, the 102s got used. In okay. fact, I, I might have. Are these the ones I blew up? 104s. <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll sort that out. I got plenty of 104s. I got 104s for days. I'm not worried about 104s. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I guess I'm going with the 10. I know at this point, who cares, right? <laughs> yeah. For inductors, brown, black, black, 10 micro Henry. Yeah, no, I'm with you, SC Flowers. But the kit, you know, the kit is saying right here, 100 micro Henry. Just send it. 100 yeah, they need to, maybe they just dropped the decimal point. Maybe it's 10.0. Exactly, Jody. Exactly. So yeah, look, look, here's my here's my LC meter with that with the with the choke, and it's advertising 10 micro Henry. So they just got the wrong part. Does your multimeter allow you to test it? He's got a meter. Yeah. He's testing, he's testing it right I've got there. an LC meter. Oh geez. I looked away second. And so what is the, does the schematic, can you find it on the schematic? Yeah, I think so. And it's same 100, 100 micro Henry? Uh, how do I just rotate this page? I'm going with, hey, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> well, true. <sighs> All right, so we're on the final right now. So final amp. No, right there. There's one hundred. The yeah, right here. Here it is. Sure. Here it is. One hundred micro Henry. It's. The schematic shows one hundred micro Henry. There's no other one hundred micro Henry in this whole thing. Can you see that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hard to screw up 100 versus 10 on a schematic team. Well, unless the schematic is what was screwed up, and then uh, they printed the board based on that. I like Jody. Jody, you your comment had conviction and confidence behind it. Jody says, the 100 micro Henry on the schematic is a biased choke on the base of the Q2. Smaller might work there, so try the 10. Done. Sold. <laughs> I'll buy that for nothing. Just wind a coil of copper wire and add it to the uh, the choke and, and, and increase the uh, micro Henry's. I'll jam a penny yeah. in it. <laughs> Stick a yeah. fork in a leg socket. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just just wind a toroid uh, until you get uh, till you get it what, at the right value that you want. I'm not trying to turn this into an all night stream as much as some of you guys <laughs> might want that. <laughs> By the way, af the after chat is going to be on YouTube. We're not going to go to Twitch today. So if anybody wants to uh, hang out, well, actually, no, I think it still has to be on Twitch because I do want to end this YouTube live stream at some point. Yeah, I think you, if you don't, then wasn't it Hayden that ended up having one of his disappear because it was too long? Mm. If this disappeared, I don't think anybody would be my, would mind. <laughs> <laughs> we would we're enjoying it we want to come back well you're here for the you're not going to watch this after tonight nobody's going to watch this video are you kidding me i know exactly. sometimes when i, I do a live stream I'm and i'm get, like well nobody's going to watch this one i'm going to get 500 views on this and that's it <laughs> and they're all going to be on the after view when you do when you connect it to the uh the the um puck launcher and send it and then use the shotgun to put it out of its misery Oh yeah, because it's still a, um, it, it's still uh, you know in a tuna can, so it can get launched. Would, I can eat it. Would, hey, would we're that... three and a half hours in. We want to see how this thing goes. Oh, it's... Paul! <laughs> Come on, you gotta. If, if yeah, we got all the confidence, Josh. You're you you're doing fine. Yeah. If you take it out to shoot it, would that, that pretty much be a the uh, the K booty method? Was that Adam Savage says anything's a smoke machine if you use it wrong enough. So I'm 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 tapping into solder roll number two here, guys. We're going the distance. That's that's why we keep uh we keep the magic smoke uh in in stock so we can refill it once we you know release it. That's right. This this is a transceiver, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, at some point you should be able to get it to a point where you can at least hook a speaker to it. Well, no, we're, we're already we're already well past that point. But I think we're, we're still we're still dealing with this whole jumper business from earlier in the build. Remember the, the whole jumper yeah, yeah, game yeah. on the writ until we can mm -hmm. uh, have parts left over to jump this appropriately. We're not going to be able to actually complete the circuit. Nothing is completed right now. It's it's running open. You know what uh, I mean? So you can't even get to a point where you could receive. Right. Uh, well, yeah, I've got I've got nothing. The oscillator is not even in place. There's no oscillation. So we're okay. we're 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 just we're just hanging out. See, I've got this bad boy too. Where does this go? <laughs> well, there's there's a, obviously a transistor left over, right? Uh, yes. Okay. It's the one hundred one. Yeah, it's the one hundred one. Okay, that, hold on. That does not look like a transistor. That's. No, it's not. No, but there's a see. There's a three hole part right there. Yeah, I've I've got all of it. I, I'm oh, telling you, okay, I got okay. the parts. Okay. I'm not I'm not missing any parts. I really don't think I am. It just wasn't separated in baggies. Oh. The smaller choke tends to was will just mean lower power output. So it's, oh yeah, well, who wants lower power output with such a high speed low drag CW radio such as this? All right, what's next? So we got uh, where's our 10k? Okay, we can we can ditch the LC meter. Thank you, LC meter. You came in really handy. I'm glad I bought you for like 20 bucks on Amazon. I have to add that to my list. You lower the power anymore, you're gonna have trouble reaching your front yard. <laughs> right. He won't light up the Christmas trees, though. All right. Yeah, really. So well, it is. A, it, is go, it does go in a tin can, so that's when you attach the accessory string and get another tin can. <laughs> ah, there's our orange, orange, orange. It's time for him now. 
the 33k oh is that the uh the the uh the uh, the, uh, the extra version Oh yeah, we've we've now breached the 200 uh, viewer. We're we're under 200 viewers now. <laughs> People are giving up. <laughs> no way. It says 205 here, Josh. Oh, it does. Not on my end. Oh, okay. No, yeah. people are. It, they're coming back, guys. We're building it back up. <laughs> Uh, build a morse coat whoa what's this what's this three hour long um what is this train wreck i want to see this a train, train wreck. wreck yeah i want to be there for that <laughs> all right where's that 102 are you in here where he's not he's not called out in here either is he i'm telling you what i think this one oh th yeah yeah what a mess i'll tell you what i'll tell you what well, maybe they put the 102s in there for more capacitance to make up for the lack of hint of, of uh, inductance on the <laughs> on the choke. Is that it? Did we figure it out? Is this an all band transceiver? No, no. It's it's in yeah. fact it's yeah. one crystal, so you're not going to get very far either side of that crystal. It it may not even be a one band transceiver. Can it do FT8? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. All right. So where's the 104? That's the point, point one microfarad. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to get deep. Jody on the phone every time we do these. Just do, Jody, what do you want me to do here? Shall I yeet it? Yes, go ahead, yeet. Commence yeeting. So I got I got 104s for, for days, so I... I Screwed up on those. Now, lines. there's the comment of the night. He goes, I came here because I saw tuna and ham in the title, and I'm hungry. Nice. <laughs> well, we cat we catfished you with uh, with Morse code tuna can radio. Did it audit. I mean, I hope this thing blows up at the very least. That would be deserving. Uh, what else am I missing? I got the 104. <laughs> The 473. Is this the 473? That's the 102. I don't see any control parts on this thing. Oh, no. There's How... no control. It's one frequency. Mm -hmm. It is one... a frequency oh, okay. of one. You guys one. were talking about not being able to go very far either side, and I'm like, how do you go at all either side? The writ. Okay. <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> well, Douglas, you may not we may not get you through your uh, work shift. All right, so we're on our last couple of parts here. <laughs> we got uh 1.047. What guy is that? That's the ceramic cap, the 473. Stand in for the 0 0.05 microfarad near the antenna stand in. What? Yeah, so it's right there by the antenna port. Yeah, but what? Why is no, it a stand-in? What does that mean? No idea. Yes, I use a a Shari for, kit for All Star. It works really well. Anyone have used? Oh yeah, Alan. A lot of people use that. Okay, so what mm. was this guy again? Jody, you're you you already commented. Where does this guy go? What is this for? Is that the the point zero four seven? This guy? Bloop. Probably not. It's actually just done. Oh, the green chiclet. It needs a point five zero, but there's no, no, there's not no such part. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> scope it. I, you know what? I should have set the scope up. I really should have for this one, because man, we need that version two schematic right now. Hold on. Is it just me, or is the positive? 
a little black. He painted it. He painted the red on the positive and just took two black wires. Yeah. Yes. I had two black wires, so I painted one red. Because the other uh, red wire I have is like, you know, super, super tiny gauge. I didn't want to run that. Are you trying to wire shame him, bro? I mean, I I just cracked open a Noctua fan to find out it's dead, so my 3D printer's down again for another week. Hey, Josh, we're this far in. Just go grab that scope. I don't have anywhere to put it right now. Hold on. Damn it. I just I just looked up W1REX just to make sure he wasn't silent key. I think I anybody who's still here is probably in for the long haul. Mm -hmm. You can't pick none of that stuff up locally, Chris? For an Octua? No. Or do, do you guys have like a... Oh, I don't know what you guys would have. We used to have a Fry's, but they shut down. Mm -hmm. Micro Center... <laughs> Doesn't bless us up here. Don't don't feel bad. Uh, I've got a, a, quite a haul to go to Micro Center. I have to go to Sacramento. I think is the closest. Go to Free Geek, bro. Oh my god! But I want to knock. I need a quiet fan though. Like if I if I probably have a forty millimeter fan around here somewhere. But like, yeah. It, it, all right, Jody. Here you go. On it. Get ready, Jody. Here comes the. Here comes the boom. No, I'm already here, but uh oh my god, focus. Hold on, they're gonna focus this. This is bad. Why is it okay? Focusing? The green the green chiclet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> if this thing turns into a flop, just use the old max voltage uh trick. Oh my god, you can't read it. Oh oh oh! Twist the twist the 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 thing on the end of your it's upside microscope. Down. It's upside down. Yeah, there it is. Four seven three k three eight four seven three k. Yeah. What size were you looking for, Josh? Is that a four seven three? Yay! Yeah. We got it. <laughs> It's the 473. So this is the yeah. 0 0.047 microfarad cap. I was just going to say, if you need aye, spare aye, parts, aye. just crack open your GE help radio. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's that's within oh, arm's reach. What, what I can, would I can work crack better, her open. The, the GE radio or that? <laughs> I could put some pills in this thing, right? <laughs> okay, what's left? Uh, the last Naked. bit. The last. There we go. Make you know, still... plug it into your amplifier. I mean, Are you still missing the Q2? We still. What? Yeah, the Q2 part, but it it's shown. Yeah, there it is right there. It's right there. Transition. Ah. I told you, I've got, I've got everything. I, I still have some more solders, but it's all here. Confidence has never seemed to help me in electronic kits. <laughs> that's never mm -hmm. been that's never been the solution to any problem. I lacked confidence. Oh, that was that was all it was. Well, yeah. Part of part of the problem that I have, and maybe you do too, is that I mean I couldn't sit down from nothing, and and just draw it draw this out on a piece of paper and and, and know no oh, okay if I go get this these parts, then I've created a radio. I have no idea how to do that. So I, I, I could I could probably stack exchange me a radio, like take other circuits and like bodge them together, you know, but I'm not doing that in the course of a couple of hours. I'm going to be spending a couple of days on that. Ooh, that is a horrible solder. What happened in there? Buddy. 5G. It's not Second degree burn. burns in three, two... No, I'm not. I mean, if you're burning, if you're burning yourself, not burning yourself with solder, you're not doing it. I will say, I'm I'm pretty confident with my soldering. It smells that like lead chicken. was pretty short. We, if we really want to give Josh a challenge, we need to get some SMDs 
Oh, I've done plenty of SMGs. I can do some of them with this little with this mini tip. Yeah, but, uh, Adam Adam's kit has Kevin. an SMD on it, and it does not look it like it's easy to put on there. Uh, till dawn, Matt yeah. brought his to uh, Pacific Beach, and uh, he's like, I'm like, oh, I can do SMD. Like he asked uh, the other Mike to bring his soda kit, so I'm like, oh, is it Adam's kit? Like just. I'll bring my stuff. So I brought my hot air gun and stuff. Well, at the house, uh, there was a lot of cursing involved because I didn't realize how small <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I had the basically hot air put on the hot. I didn't have my vice like Josh has and all that. I oh, I I, I don't know how you could do it without a vice. Um, so I basically put it on. The antenna out is an RCA. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. yep. Welcome to QRP me. Um, so I basically did uh, SMD soldering on top of a stovetop. <laughs> That's funny. It did work, but oh, yeah, you no, did a did reflow a... by putting the the board on a skillet no, it was, or something. It was Adam's. It was Adam's forty nine to one. Yeah, but that you took the board and put it on a skillet or something. No, I just I had my hot air gun. Oh, okay. But, but I needed like a surface, and it's I didn't. Ever since I've had LASIK, I can't see closely. Because um, mm. I used to be like before my my LASIK and all that, like I was nearsighted, so I could basically be within an inch of the board, see it yeah. clearly. I, I'm I'm nearsighted, and that's exactly so. Yeah. Like right now, because uh, the, the monitor is so close, I have to have my glasses off in order to yeah, see. Like, but it, with I mean, it's like a it's magnet. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're. It's my when I first had my LASIK checkup, my optometrist. She's like, "How you doing?" I'm like, well, I tried to fix uh, a knot. I can't see it. She's like, how close were you? I'm like, through two or three inches. She's <laughs> like, yeah, that's because you were nearsighted. It's like, now that your vision's corrected, I'm like, well, you should have told me this before I paid all this money for my yeah, search. Yeah. Okay. So I, I've got to have cataract surgery, and that's exactly oof. what I told him. So I, I, said, I, no. I think our last bit is we got to get the, the low pass filter board on. I think. Shoulder bridges are just a ground plane. I care. That you, you do <laughs> this number, but we're going to look at it. I think it goes like that. Yeah. It does. I'm I'm glad you said that, Chris, because I was looking at getting LASIK for the same thing, and now, yep, negative Ghost Rider. That's how it goes. Well, I was I was I I mean that's only the one loss then that I had. Otherwise, I mean recovery was a bit of a pain. But... Yeah. Well, what the guy told me or the uh, the surgeon said. I mean, I I don't. I'm several like many years actually out from having to have cataract surgery, but um the he said when he does it he can put because they put they literally take your lenses out now that the and then they put new like plastic lenses inside your eyes so they don't change focus anymore and he said yeah if you want near vision like you've got today i can do that no problem oh wow and i told him yeah that's what i want i want i want to be able to pick up a board look at it and see exactly what's on the board yeah. i don't really they care. actually have multi-focus point well yeah, they do. I don't want those. I want fixed focus close up, like, I, yeah, like just like my eyes are now. Or like if you like my dad when he got his PRK, they're like, we can do a mono, mono vision, so we can do one eye far, mm -hmm. one eye near. Yeah, your, that's your, your brain. Tell my wife that, and I and she's like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. My wife had cataract surgery a number of years ago, and it's, I mean, based on her her deal, it, it, there's nothing to it much. No, I mean, it, even my, you, my father in law just worry about it, but it's yeah, I mean, so much in the last couple of years. It was funny <laughs> taking her home after that because she was loopy. Man, good god, we've turned into 80 meters. Well, so side boom back to a younger <laughs> surgery. Um, they put so they put me on uh, for the LASIK, they put me on Prozac. So they gave me a pill of Prozac for before the surgery. And like you basically don't give a shit about anything. All right, but I'm on then, YouTube, guys. Then the Prozac it's eighty uh, meter the best. No. Uh the best thing was <laughs> the second Prozac. The second Chris. Prozac, you'll Chris. Chris. Hey what? Chris, I'm he's live on, on YouTube. He's streaming. He's streaming. Either way, seventeen hours I slept seventeen hours after the surgery. Best sleep of my life. <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> hey Chris, don't forget to print QSL cards. Oh, <laughs> 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 right, 
shut me up with that. Way. Beep boop boop beep. I don't know why you play, and I had it. I have my phone set to automatically text message them in the morning. Yeah. Oh, so God. so if we talk start talking about the uh, the expanse, does that get you a strike on YouTube? No, only if we stream the actual. <laughs> yeah. Don't let don't be don't be stream audio while I'm uh, live streaming from the expanse. Best or thing show thing ever. So yeah, everybody that good. that's into sci-fi, but I, I'm not go caught up. So, it, so don't talk about was, that. Uh, I won't. So. Was it po- Pokemon or something got banned from Twitch for live streaming Avatar? Yeah, yep. but it was only it's only like a two day. Yeah. She, well, well, yeah, with the money she makes, yeah. They they just banned 150 Twitch streamers permanently banned, and then they arrested them. What? Apparently, yeah. Apparently, though, they were all in Turkey. And they, because well, the, the reason was they were apparently money money laundering. They would have a guy streaming, and then they'd have a bunch of people that come in to him, and they would donate money to him that they had stolen. So this money would then go, you know go through the Twitch stream to him, and then you know he'd give it back to him. So yeah, that oh, way he'd take yeah. a but And there were 150 of them that were doing that stuff. Damn, son. That that's pretty impressive. Well, they they the way they caught them too was you know these they're like really small channels with only a few guys that were following, and yet they were uh, moving hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Jesus, like how stupid can you be? I thought the the uh, was it the couponing and uh, bad girls was interesting. Was it Kazakhstan who just went through a whole thing because of crypto? Mm-hmm. They banned I crypto? Mm-hmm. Big dealer by UPS. I'll type below. Come on, board. Uh, there's been a lot of unrest in Kazakhstan. I didn't know that it was because they banned crypto. No, mm-hmm. it's because power uh, was incredibly cheap in Kazakhstan. And so people were using it to mine crypto. And the government, like, you know, not getting any taxes or anything for that. So they 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 stepped in and said no bueno. It in Kazakhstan. Well, you know the, the I think the Russians are the one they asked for the help from the Russians on it too well, to put the unrest down because you know Kazakhstan is kind of important to the Russian space industry. Well, there's a uh, some miners in Canada that don't pay for power, and they've got huge data centers. Must be nice. Yeah, uh, they they actually live in this ooh. in this town. Ta- they're they're in this abandoned okay. town. There was no an old mill, uh, paper mill, and the paper mill had hydroelectric power. So they just went in there and bought the paper mill building that already had the hydroelectric power shipped to it, and they started installing servers. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. And uh, really? some of the some of the miners work with some of the uh, power plants too overseas. Okay, so now uh, we have a we have a assembled radio. I don't know if it's working. It's assembled. So now we, we got to do this final checkout here. So, guys, what 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 it, it, of all the components that that I I could have left over? Uh, what what from back in the beginning of the stream? What what who who thinks they know what capacitor I have left over? A ten. Nope. You have two one o twos. I have. One, one o two. One b- bad boy one o two is still there. It's the, there was no one o one. There was never a one o one. There was only ever a one o two. There was only ever a one o two. And how many did you need? I needed one. Okay, and put it in. Let's let let's see. Hold on. So let me let me go back. Uh, Let's go well, back to the write up here because I don't want to screw this. Well, I don't care if I screw up at this point, but I don't want to if I have to. So let me go to the website. Well, there there is a on the website there is a suggestion on there with, to use the leftover parts to b- build some kind of a filter on the audio stream to remove hissing. I don't even care. Uh, hey, if it hisses, Don, I'm taking it. We're good. <laughs> if it hisses, we know. It, it, it hisses, yeah, we're good. Right. Uh, okay, so note. So we've got to figure out this writ uh, pin jumper situation. And so it's saying oh God, it does writ. on the the 100 picofarad disc ceramic cap, the 101 quantity two, 
One goes at the writ B E at one, and one goes at the writ E G. Both are inserted, not soldered. So this is the one that I wasn't able to get past. So apparently I have a 102 left. But I don't have a second one. Where's the second one? Yeah, two of them. Oh, wait. Well, got... Is this it? Hold on. No, that's the eight, the 82. Okay, so let's walk through this. The 82 Pico Farad cap. Let's go back to the screen so you can see it. So here's the 82 Pico Farad cap. That goes in the RIT R, which is this guy right there. Can you see that? There, that R right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're good on that. R is just inserted, not soldered. Okay, the 100 disc ceramic cap 101 quantity two goes to B, E, and E, G, which are over here. Yeah. And those, and then the crystal, right? I'm impressed this whole thing has writ. Somebody was saying earlier in the chat that it's required for CW. Uh, to, oh, yeah, so it's, it transmits and receives on the same frequency. Hmm. But then... now we're, we're down a cap. Where where is the so you still have one part left right the crystal? Uh, I have two. It comes with so it does come with two crystals. I will give it that. That that's oh, actually okay. a nice bit of kit there. My dog is barking about something. I assume the cat. So I, I got to take a look <laughs> here and make sure I don't have a. Oh okay nice. So you're still down a capacitor? Yeah. And what do I get if it's actually under your chair? And, uh, <laughs> it's not under my chair, but I will look. Congrats, Tony, on passing your technician. Congrats, Tony. Congratulations. You're in a tin can and Morse code radio. Save a copy. Who's who's ripping on their vape on mic? What is that transmit receive jumper for? Oh, I need to find another 102. Oh my god, I have so many 104s. Hell with it, just stick a 104 in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, what it, it's going to be off frequency, right? Basically, is what it's going to do. Hey, if you if you could put like your 7610 and and just look at the spectrum that's what i'm and planning somewhere on doing. <laughs> you see a a pulse you know hey we we've won the day and for that matter i was thinking just stick a jumper in there don't even put a cap <laughs> uh, i may be all over the place then right uh, again, if you're if you're seeing something on that scope, man, what difference? Because <laughs> you can. The point is, you can always order those parts. I mean, you know, uh, even uh, possibly uh, Amazon. You know, mm -hmm. have them next week. Okay, so what yeah, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, the headline would read, you know, uh, 
uh, they're still searching for the reason why all the GPS satellites fell from the sky. <laughs> yeah, with your luck, it just ended up on 7.2. If this thing works, we got to plug it into the amp. I mean, come on now. Beans. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> Yeah, Tim, Tim, the tool man, Taylor, more power. All right. <laughs> uh, doesn't have it. It doesn't have enough power to even drive the amp. No, the amp, the amp would laugh at it. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't even push it. All right, so we got it. We got the jumper on I. The R capacitor's in place. We have a one hundred and two. I don't have a one hundred and two, so there is a stand-in capacitor. I know for crystal. a fact them radio waves is harmful. Hey, thank you so much for the one dollar. Appreciate it. Uh, and then the T. What's supposed to go in the T? It's not mentioned. Rit T. Look in uh, in the chat. Somebody posted up a pretty clear picture of what, how that's supposed to work out. Uh, the Discord chat. Yeah, in the live stream. kd 9 m posted a really nice looking uh, diagram. Oh well, Josh has that diagram. Let's go to the web. Wrong one. Okay, hold on. I need to look at this for a second. All right, Matt. QSL cards are ordered. I saw. I'm You're still going to get a text in the morning. It doesn't mention anything about the T. The microphone. How do you... Oh, you... Oh, yeah, that, my number. that TR jumper, I don't see anywhere. Yeah, yeah. there it is. I yeah, would, it's there. But it, I would it, say the T it's, on RIT is nothing. It's not mentioned on the uh, instructions, though. Yeah. Well, it's not even in, shown in the schematic that I'm seeing. You, are you talking about the RIT? RIT T. See, there's. Yeah, it a, says 0. .001 UF. Where? Where do you see that? On that schematic that's on Discord? Right, but not in the instructions. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Just part of the instructions. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so uh, what's a one picofarad? Hold on. That is a point zero zero one. Measure DC picofarad. voltage with the crystal removed RF with 50 ohm load. That doesn't make sense. I'm not pulling any witchcraft right now because nothing's working. Uh, yeah, we gotta close. We gotta close all the holes here, basically. And I don't have. I'm missing. I'm missing this. Uh, this last jumper. Well, that three-pin jumper at the bottom of the board doesn't even show in the schematic that I can see it. What is that? TR switch. That's fun. That's interesting. It's got a TR switch. Okay. How do we want to play this one? Uh, what value is a 0 0.001 microfarad? I know for a fact them radio waves is harmful. What do the traces for those? Use empty... a one. Go ahead. Where do the traces <laughs> for the empty, uh, empty uh, sockets go on the on well, the? Well, uh... it's we got to close it so we get a circuit. Otherwise, it's just an open. We just have an open mess. Uh, w four. Radio waves what is, is it? Harmful. W four. QRH Ron, thank you for the super chat for the capacitor kit to add to your shack. I've got one. I just got to, I, I didn't think I would need all this stuff. Will fit in a soup. Will it fit in a soup can? Well, it's going to fit in a soup can full of soup in here in a second. Uh, is a 104. Oh, it's a 104. We got that. Boys, we're in business. We're, we're, I got plenty of 104s. 104s for days. I don't know where my my big capacitor kit is, but thank you for that. Really pulling it through. Don't know if anything's gonna happen here. I don't know why I'm belaboring it so much, but let's let's try. Because you're you're hoping that it at least smokes. 
Right. Yeah, okay, so everything has a something in it. Okay. Moment of moment of sauce. Here we here we go. You guys have been waiting for this. Uh, I am going to connect an antenna though. Now we have to do that because the PA is there. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, I have an RCA connector. Woohoo! To a SO two thirty nine. Or. Yeah, you could push it into uh, dummy load. I'm going to. Yeah. Might want to get a fire extinguisher before you put uh, power to that. Do what now? You might want to get a fire extinguisher before you push power through that. Oh, I got a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Volts. All right, we're going to turn over. Have you not seen him build before? Of course he's got a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Of course, I have a fire extinguisher. Oh, okay. This week on Leia's Preparedness Corner. <laughs> are you? Why I had to buy two more fire extinguishers for the garage? Are, are you going to put that little? Uh, speaker Why in? we equip the yeah. garage with a sprinkler system? Okay, here we go. Let me take this head. <laughs> Yeah, we won't we won't hear a lot with it connected to a dummy load, but nothing. Let's attach a well, key. Yeah, but how how much would you actually hear with it connected to a dummy load? Oh, on my seventy six ten that's sitting right next to it, I'd hear the whole thing if it was. So hold on, let's. Well, you're not you're not outputting, right? Well, that's that's what we're gonna do. Here we go. Oh, okay, all right. I got really excited there. That was not me. <laughs> no, that's the, the repeater Jason had me connect to. Theoretically, what's the frequency it should be? Uh, one seven point one two two. Why are you sitting in his front yard waiting for the signal? <laughs> Hell yeah! I've had time to drive all the way there. <laughs> I'm in Orange <laughs> County, so I might be able to hear it. Hey, hey, uh, nope. Don, I didn't know you installed the jet fighter engine to your uh, van. Yeah, I did that. Did that a couple of weeks ago, Mike. Oh, okay. I don't. Well, I hear, not a fan of this kit. Really. Don't don't get this kit. Okay. I'm Three hours this. and fifty-seven uh, minutes not... for those that are counting. I'm not convinced that you can get it. I think just the website's still up. So imagine this. You're on a We lost you. Ship that has been crashed at sea. All you have to get help is this kit. You're screwed. How much power <laughs> how much power are you giving it, Josh? Nine volts. Give it twelve. Okay. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get this. Give kit. it one ten AC. <laughs> Give it one ten. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, in agreement with Booty right now. Turn the knob <laughs> until those uh, capacitors leak. Oh, the no, no. things that go without saying for one thousand, Alex. <laughs> nope. Is this supposed to be a receiver as well? Yes, allegedly. So. Well, that's that's the thing that you know. So okay, if you if you want good, uh, what was that? Did it just? That was weird. Okay. Anyway, so like good good uh, radios, kit radios. Let me back this up here. Where's my? I always keep a nine volt around here just for these uh, purposes. So okay, verdict on this guy. It it comes in a tin. And, and there you go. You can. Are you sure you have the polarity right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that would be fun to reverse the polarity. You have a diode. Isn't it diode protected? Yeah, I just burn out the diode. Did we burn out the diode? Let me see. No, I just mean if you if you reverse the power, that's what happens. No, I know. Well, if this thing really doesn't work, just plug it back in and crank the. Uh... 
DC voltage up as high as it'll go on your little power supply. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not. Yeah, hold on. So one one thing one thing you could try, and it's up to you, but you could take your seventy six ten, tune it to that frequency, and use your key to send something and see if this thing actually plays. Or uh, I was. It. I already did that. Oh, you oh you did that. Oh okay, yeah, well. of course. Oh hell, we're we're in deep shit then. I was. What do you mean on the seventy? No, I'm not even hearing anything on the output uh, on the audio. Right, so right, it's, right. It's yeah. it. It's a bad kit. Yeah. I I screwed up for sure, but I have plenty of kits that that work, and I didn't have any problem with them. But man, this one is not. No well, bueno. Yeah, the instructions are not. Don't even match what you got. The cricket was all he wants. Where is my key? Just to be in your defense, it looks fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long ago did you order the kit? I didn't order it. Somebody oh. gave it to me. Oh. Yeah. See, Booty, that's that's why they gave it to him. They knew it was bad. I was the winner of a of a free radio. Um, so let's uh what do I want to do? How how do I how do I wrap up this train wreck? You need to plug in a TX jumper. Mm. No, what you need to do is take take your tuner and from your amp mm -hmm. put it to those power leads and just key down into the thing and walk, make just do it like christmas <laughs> lights but into that into that little tuna can and just see if we can get well hey i got a rando idea fireworks. yeah what's the possibility that the circuit's throwing the frequency off and you need to tune around the dial a little bit i've got a 500k window on the 7610 open up yeah the 7610 would hear it <laughs> it's open it's open the moral of the story is when you are buying a tuna-based radio, make sure it is an environmentally safe and eco-friendly tuna-based radio. Yeah. That that yeah. one they caught a couple of dolphins with. Too much mercury in the radio. Well, if it doesn't if it doesn't come in a spam can, don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, jo Josh just built a Balfang. Not no fun on that one. Uh, I will I will mention again um, if you if you want a good first timer kit. The cricket is the one you want. That's that's mm. a great little radio. It comes with the straight key. It's built in. It has the inductors, or sorry, the toroids already built. Mm. Very straightforward. It's also mono banded or mono frequency. Um, yeah. yeah, but it uh, works. Four state QRP is fantastic. The other one I, I want to mention. Fact, them radio waves is harmful. Oh, thank you, Shatteru. I appreciate cans? it. The the one. Uh, well, thank you everybody for watching. I, I appreciate that this was kind of uh, non, not climactic. And I, you know what? I think I'm still going to do the after chat. It's just maybe a little short. Let me see. Okay, it makes me feel better about my skills. So what yeah. I what I was going to say is I, I did a video on this guy. This is a, a build that I did. This is a fantastic kit radio. This guy is a 40 meter. It has an attenuator. Um, it has. It's BNC. It has a frequency readout display, and it is slightly frequency um, agile. This is a cool radio. Um, I've got to figure out what the heck this is, though, so I can recommend it. Um, it was like Texas something or other. I'm going to figure out. It looks like it comes in a very solid box with very solid knobs, and I like that. You know yeah, what we it say? It almost looks like one of those minions. For, for all of our British friends watching, us Americans, we like a good knob. Wow, you had to go there. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so what do I want to do? I think I'm going to wrap this up because, oh, man, this has gone on too long. Uh, I'm going to hop over to uh, Twitch, and I'm going to get the, the uh, cricket on the air and probably that orange radio, and I'll figure out what the heck that orange radio is. Uh, yeah, I'm very unhappy with the with that all that. I thought the instructions were going to match what was in the can, and then once I saw that one bag and there was no five bags, I knew I was in trouble, but we sallied forth for <laughs> three hours. It's horrible. You know, Josh, you put out a lot of videos. Yeah. I'm scrolling back, looking for the name of that radio. Mm. There's still... It was last year. ...four people watching, so... Okay, hold on. So let, let me go to my channel here, so I can... I don't want to leave you guys hanging, because it is actually a really pretty cool radio.
Ay, ay, ay. Do you have, how, how many videos does this guy make? This is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it is, hey, it's the WA3 Romeo November Charlie Easy Build Morse Ham Radio. WA3. Morse ham radio. WA3 what? RNC. Uh, yeah, you know what? Oh, I might be leading you guys down a, a bad road. So they, this is their new radio that they're doing. By the way, Joe Eisenberg built this. He really likes this. Uh, this is probably not a very <laughs> easy build. Uh, it's mostly surface mount, so I'm assuming that most of this is you winding toroids and adding some caps. So let me let me go back Let's up to the main the page. Oh, that's probably a good idea. But uh, but I want to see if they... Is this it? Oh, they don't have it anymore. Oh, dude. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's all through hole. For that one, the friendly one, it's all through hole stuff you're basically doing. Hmm. Uh, a lot it's of toroid like windings. There's three, six toroids you have to wind. It's multiple banded? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's four three banded. Band. Oh, it's four banded. It had four crystals, so. And yeah, there's the lower board assembly. It can do nine assembly. watts, which is pretty impressive. Or it's two band. That looks more like a kit that would actually teach me how a radio works. Uh, yeah, because you go through the whole thing. The other one that's good is the, the okay. So the the QCX Mini is a really cool kit. But it's not easy to build. Yeah. And it's it's pretty cheap actually. So if you consider that stupid tuna can was forty bucks, this thing is fifty five bucks, but you're gonna pay a lot more to get the enclosure and all that stuff and it's mono banded. Uh the instructions though, it is a difficult build. Let me let me dive into this guy. So you're you're putting everything that isn't a uh IC or a surface mount in. So you're building uh, five toroids, a couple of caps, a uh, couple of potentiometers, not building the potentiometers, installing them. A couple adjustable resistors, mm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, adjustable Did resistors. Did you build those, Josh? Uh, I did, but I had a bad part with mine. And so I, I've got I've got a call out to them to fix it. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I've got so many, so many small QRP radios that... Um, I don't know that I need another one that I, I I don't absolutely need this working right now, so I'm not I'm not chasing it down, but it's a cool kit. Although I would not put this in the uh, beginner, it's the upper intermediate level. What about the one from India? Uh, the microbitx. Yeah, yeah, microbitx. So that's not really that's more of an assembly project. Yeah, you don't really solder anything but connectors. It comes if pre-built. If you had the older, if you had the older earlier generations yeah. it was pretty useful for like understanding how a radio mm -hmm. works because you had to make some modifications to make it legal but now that they've pretty much honed the design very well it's yeah it's basically soldering potentiometers i built i built one of mm -hmm. these well assembled one of these fully with wow. a touch screen and the new model six which is the one that's advertised on their site actually does have the um the screen which is really nice. Um, mm -hmm. And I've troubleshot one. It's actually sitting on my table that I've got to get back to get working because it's it's kind of a funky, cool radio. But I'm going to wrap up, guys, because it's seriously, I've been going way too long. I am going to uh, take 10 minutes or so because nobody's home yet in my house. There's no reason for me to stop streaming. So I'm going to go strictly to the Discord and I'm going to be on Twitch. So if you guys want to continue, I'm probably going to hook up the cricket and the other this other orange box one and, and get on the air with them, play, uh, have a little fun with it. Maybe do a little uh, FT8 as well. Haven't completely, uh, <laughs> haven't completely abandoned the idea that I will also be connected to VR through this whole thing. So I, I haven't decided yet. I had some big goals, big aspirations today, but this kit really, uh, really put me through the ringer. Do not buy the, yeah. the, the tuna can kit. That's all I'll say about that. So, okay. If anybody wants my cat cups, the Amazon uh, link in the description will take you to my, my beer yeah, cat cup. cup. Man. All right. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to go yeah, hang man. out and enjoy myself in the after chat. So if you want to join me, link in the description. Go go ahead, guys. What were you going to say, Don? Oh, I was just going to say the next kit you get has got to be that Mercury 3S. 
Oh, I I think it might be the next kit I get. I think uh I think yeah, but I think I've, just I think an I've, assembly. I've decided it, no, assembly gotta, is there's, fine. There's some there's some soldering in it, and it's not it's not your usual kind of soldering. So do I need a oh, big you, soldering you, gun? You, you have to get the blowtorch out, is it? Some some of it they recommend in some cases using a soldering iron because what you or or a soldering gun because what you're doing is you're soldering. Um, coax between the boards and holy smokes I, that that was that was a little tricky for me but i used the hacko and you know i okay. got it done it's, all right it's been a year now it's still running so i must have done it right guys uh thank you so much <laughs> that's why i did not go to plan but i swear i have plenty of other kit builds the only two um i think i failed on the qcx mini live and this one live but all my other kits have been pretty successful I think mountain topper. The mountain topper works. That works. Yeah, yeah, but that was the one that that you had I, to didn't you have to send that out to him? I think I did. No, I think you got me <laughs> on that one. So yeah, I guess it's it's three. Um, uh, that one works. So I'll pull that one down too. That one is tricky. I don't recommend people start out with that one. That's a that's a trickier build for sure. Okay, that's it. Everybody have fun. I'll see you in the Discord if you want to join, and then we'll do the standard ask your questions, all that stuff. Enjoy the meme. Oh, I got to do the... Oh, are there any patrons left? <laughs> if it wasn't for the patrons, I wouldn't have my Hako iron. I would. The tuna can kit was not because of the patrons. I don't blame you patrons for that. That LC meter that I pulled out, um, a lot of the kit that you saw today is because of the support from the, the Patreon supporters. I really do appreciate you all. It means a lot. And man, uh, this was a... <laughs> This is a bit of a marathon. Appreciate those that stuck around uh, for all of it. But I, I understand, too. This is <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. So, <laughs> mm. A big shout out to Grimus, uh, an honorary member of the Brew Crew, if he's not already. But thank you so much for sending those uh, delicious beers. Man, what a what a <laughs> what a show. Uh, one for the, the record book, I guess. But anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it, man. Okay, um, I need a 9-volt battery, and I need – that's all I need. I don't know where my 9-volt is. I keep a shack nine, a hot shack 9-volt. Apparently, somebody kiped it from my uh, stash here. So Why don't you just the take one from the get a 9 – why don't you get a 9-volt um, connector and wire it to some clips so you can just plug it into your power supply and turn your power supply down to 9 volts? You with these great ideas. I, I think I might actually have some nine volts. I could probably do that. Yeah, I got. I yeah. got some nine volt. Uh... Yeah, just pop over there, Don. It won't take you a minute. Yeah, he's he's close. He's adjacent. <laughs> no, I, I think I can. I, I think I've got some nine volt connectors I can grab, and those are already mm -hmm. on out. The that power supply is already on alligator clips, so that's an easy one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Assuming it's the right orientation, it should be right. Thinking in my head. Yeah, that works. I don't know. Don't know why I had to think about that. It's binary. It's it's one or the other. It's... Okay, I'm done. I'm <laughs> Thanks, guys. Seventy three. Seventy three. Everybody on the Discord, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to hop off. All right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Take it easy. Hope to see you on the Discord.